episode of Speakers of Heidelin is made possible by our generous patrons. Special thanks to our supreme and master speakers Omeji Cat Comet, Erisu Yamakawa, Circa Barakil, Remy Asalia, Arcadia Lunashine, Alex Franco AV, Winebow Brood, Psyche, Asuta Starbreeze, Cletus Oreo, Nina Grimstotter, Nat Clay, Lily Black, Bob Cece, Mikta Rabentau, Sapa Chakwatol, Edwin, Umbral Wind, Quick Levin, Pamela Isley, Camille Grinnell, Elenriel Maximus, Codrith Novelis, Mira Miri, Bay Barbale, Suno Chicano, Celeste Aunoitrell, Lazy Boy, A Bag of Dragonite, Luke Osborne, Pandalu Stormarrow, Tex, Yowie Wowie, Kai Lin, AJ Brainswordson, Anathus Moonscar, Arthur Law, Viridan Derard, Cypup, Spencer Christmas, and Noy Fafnir. Support the show and become a patron today at patreon.com slash speakersxiv. Thank you. This is Speakers of Highland. Good evening, Aorcians. Welcome to Speakers of Heidelin, episode 287. I am Lakeel Bravestone, and I am joined today by Georgi Wiston and Mela Vanadar. Hello. Hello. This is Hello. Uh, episode 287, XL. Well, it's XL mostly because mm. we're not doing the post show. <laughs> we are an hour later than usual. So, uh, all in all, it's more like a normal episode without the post show, but we'll see. Uh, hey, we might go yeah, over time. Glad that we're happy because we could have been very upset. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Um, okay, uh, today's uh, podcast, this episode, um, will be almost entirely about live letter sixty-eight. We are one live letter away from the good one, um, and it was a m very big live letter. Uh, this was the really? the one we've been talking about for for a few weeks now. Um, the uh, the big um, next ten years of Final Fantasy fourteen, and we'll talk about that today. There is no Mogmail and there is no post show, uh, and as you can see, Rollo is not here this week, so that means he will most likely be here next week. We mm -hmm. hope. We'll he was here. We'll he see. was here for the live letter coverage, but yes, he yes. is busy unfortunately today. Yes. All right, but before we can get into the uh, live letter, let's jump into recent events. Yes, and first off in recent events, there is <laughs> there's uh, an online store sale right now uh, on the Final Fantasy XIV online store. Um, it's quite quite a big uh, sale actually. A lot of things mm -hmm. uh, discounted. Um, mm -hmm. In addition to the Valentine's Day items, um, as usual, um, it uh, will end on. A, I don't know when it ends. Is there no end date? It says that it just started mm, on the fourteenth. Yeah. So it doesn't look like there's a end date. No. No, it's it's to celebrate uh, the Oceanian DC data center. Uh, so. To be decided when it ends, I guess uh, it's a month long. Let's say let's say it ends on the fourteenth of March. Fourteenth <laughs> of March. Um, so uh, go get that. Um, go get that. Uh, on the topic of Valentine's Day, yeah. Um, remember that is ending in two days. So yes, that is oh, true. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, if you're yeah. watching. If you're watching the the YouTube video, it's too late. <laughs> it's too late for you. But oh yeah, I have to actually do the. I haven't done the follow up yet. Uh, we need to do that. You need was... to do that for the reward, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, shit. Wait, no, I did get the reward, right? No, no, I the have barding. the reward. I, I got, the barding is okay. not from the... No, I'm talking well, about the repeatable. The, I haven't done okay, do at least do one of those, because those are fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only part of this year's event that we I think is worth it. Yeah, okay. Um, moving on. Uh, automatic demolition. I forgot that that was even turned off, but uh, automatic demolition... I too. 
is recommencing. Yeah. Uh, a post on the Lodestone states that the automatic demolition of estates was suspended in December 2021 due to the ongoing congestion situation following the release of Endwalker. However, after careful consideration, we have decided to resume automatic demolition on Wednesday, March 9th, 2022, around 12 a.m. PST. Uh, around? So, yeah. Around somewhere. It's around. not something they can just turn. Okay. Maybe yeah. maybe it takes okay. time to like have all the systems go on. It's a lot of servers. It's a lot okay. of worlds. I a don't lot know. of houses to instantly delete. So. <laughs> yeah. That's not how this will work, my <laughs> love. <laughs> um, the counter for automatic demolition may be reset for certain estates depending on the usage of housing during the period when estate demolition was suspended. If an estate hasn't been built on the plot, the counter may be reset reset upon entering the estate once it has been built. Um, if an estate hasn't been built, who's bought a plot and not put a house on it for like two months? Poor people. Poor people. It's they... like an extra ten thousand gil. That's or that's why it's you... not that cheap. <laughs> All right, but it's pretty cheap. That's why you should make sure you have money for the actual house as well on the plot because that... yeah yeah. yeah. Uh, for players who have entered their estate at least once during the suspension period, the auto-demolition timer will be reset for free company estates that have been entered by a leader or member at least once, and private estates that have been entered by the owner at least once. So if you have entered your house during this, because some might be one, like worried that, oh, maybe, like, I don't remember when this, like, uh, demolition thing stopped. Like, have, was, mm -hmm. have I been in my house? Yeah, well, if you have been in your house w at least once, uh, it's reset, so don't worry about it. Um, the full 45 days. Yes. The count for days of inactivity for the aforementioned estates will begin again on Wednesday, March 9th, 2022, at around 12 a.m. PST, like I mentioned. Uh, for players who have not entered their estates during the suspension period, the automatic demolition timer will resume from the time that was remaining as of Sunday, December 5th, 2021, at 10.45 p.m. PST. Uh, an email notification will be delivered to the email address registered to the Square Enix accounts of those players who, whose estates will be prepared for automatic demolition within 10 days from the, uh, when the timer resumes. We strongly suggest those players log in and enter their estate before the automatic demolition timer is resumed on Wednesday, March 9th, 2022 at around 12 a.m. PST. So um, there you go. Um, it also goes through how you check that, but you, you know you should know this by now if you own a house. Mm -hmm. um yeah check the lodestone if you don't yes yes all the information is on the lodestone okay um that's uh that's that let's talk about the live letter um live letter was a big um deal what the hell uh, the live letter was a <laughs> hold on. The live letter was um, big. Um, we knew that before it started. Um, it was going to talk about the next ten years. Let's switch to our. Uh... It worked. Ooh. Look at that! It worked. I, I did it. Um, okay. Um, I was gonna. Okay. So what I haven't planned is that I wanted Mela. I wanted my nameplate to say Lukeel and Mela, and then I would have like Mela as like a, you know, his head here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but I would need to pull out my green screen for that. But one day I'll do that. Um, okay. Um, yes. So um, l before it the stream even to be big. <laughs> um, I say it promised to be big. Yes. Yes. Uh, Pre-stream, something nice happened. There was a nice thing that happened before the stream started. Um, essentially, confirming that we're not getting NFTs in fourteen. I guess I'll read. Um, what this uh is that is what this? the hour pre-stream was that was an hour it was was it an hour uh it, it was, was like long a, yeah it was quite long it's like 30 minutes 45 minutes ish i think uh, i thought it was just checked so i just it was the, like but i think they thing. did like a little they had like a little discussion about that uh, okay because, yeah that's fair um okay so uh this is a is this a direct quote from yoshida yeah i think so uh yeah yeah I do understand that Matsuda, which is Square Enix's president, commented on the concept of NFTs. There may be some sensitivity around the topic. Hmm. But based on how 14 is designed, we don't plan to incorporate NFTs. If you're worried or concerned, we have no intentions to incorporate NFTs in the game. Looking at reactions, there are a good amount of people that have, have it mistaken as something bad. And maybe some are unsure what an NFT is. So if there's an opportunity to talk about NFTs, etc., away from 14, 
It'd be interesting to talk about. But we'd need a specific game design to accommodate this idea. There is a potential to utilize it without going in a bad direction. But again, no NFTs in Final Fantasy XIV. Yeah, I don't like how he says that we're some are mistaken. Mis we're, we're you know mistakenly. why he's saying it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, because he's he boss. can't disagree with his CEO. Yeah, yeah that's of, true. Of fourteen. Yeah. Um, there's, boy, you know, there's. If they weren't so environmentally destructive, I can see uses for them in like a sandbox MMO. Like this crown that's been mm -hmm. crafted mm -hmm. is, you know, a unique object. But thank God we're not being bar bogged down by that nonsense. Yeah, Absolutely. True. Yeah, that's true. Um, we can also uh, look at this artwork. That was uh, that was how it all started with this um, this is new artwork for um, uh, fourteen. Yeah, it's very good. It's got all the classes. Um, it's got all of our friends there. Yeah, yeah. I believe this has Mission been revealed before, but this is, might be the first time a lot of people have seen it. Okay. Yeah. This was yeah. Um, it's very cool. Uh, we'll also get back to that I think because uh, there was some merch stuff at the very end which was shocking. Um, okay, so uh, we open um, with the introduction, um, looking oh, to yeah, the actual. On. We're not going to talk about it, but the actual introduction was a look back at the last. Yeah, we're not. We're, we're skipping Final that. Fantasy yeah, we. I mean, it's speakers oh, yeah. network. You should know. <laughs> you should know about the past of fourteen by now. Um, okay, mm -hmm. um, so. That was like uh, the first whole hour as well. I no, it wasn't. It was only half no, an hour, man. Mela, it wasn't that, that long. It felt that like was so long. That was very short, and I was very happy because I, I was starting to worry yeah. when they showed this timeline. I'm like, oh god, we're gonna yeah. sit here for hours with this. Um, yeah. So, um, looking towards seven point they mentioned advancements as a solo and multiplayer RPG experience, which is a thing, um, you know, that we need to look at. Um, as the game gets older, uh, the mm -hmm. solo aspect of it will, of course, get back mm. to that. Yeah. The second well, the game itself yeah. is like peaking in terms of popularity. It's yes. not always going to be like that. So they do no. need to prepare for the day that there might not be enough people to sustain a enjoyable amount of progress through the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's close to being solo mm -hmm. friendly. Yes, but there are those few dungeons and trials. Yeah. Mm. Um, and I think. All of Stormblood. Yes. That still needs catching up. Yeah. But then the second point here, which was something we talked about last week on the last episode, which was mm -hmm. uh, how we were we were dreaming of some sort of graphical update, and we were carefully optimistic that maybe they'll mention something during the live letter. <laughs> oh, we got a lot more yeah. than we we expected uh, we, about that. No, it was. It was close to the main point of the live letter. <laughs> yes, it was. Yeah. Uh, it's a big deal. We'll get into that. But yeah, game's first graphical update was announced. And of course, patch 6.x series roadmap. So that is sort of the live letter. Those are the three chapters, if you will, of this um, live mm -hmm. letter. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, about the next 10 years. And then a third of it's just the 6.x series, which you'd expect. Yeah. And then like a vague idea of... The future of the graphics. I mean, it's fine, but it's just... Yeah. We didn't know what to expect anyway, no. so... You um, can't talk about 10 years that easily. No, you cannot. Um, still, though, we do, we, do, we do get some stuff that I didn't expect little, uh, on that yeah, same. as well. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the first point uh, is the next... Uh, sorry, the future concept, number one, which is an even better RPG alone or with friends. And... This is essentially them bringing up that we need to, like, make this game more solo-friendly. So they're going to roll out this large-scale update to the trust system, um, which very exciting. It's kind of exciting that you can now, um, starting with 6.1, um, well, st well, starting with 6.1, that's a big asterisk here, 6.1 through 6.5, uh, trust compatibility for all main scenario dungeons and four-player trials to be added. Um, that's big. That's pretty big. That means that's you can something do... we talked about yeah, before, but we were maybe slightly hoping they would expand the squadron system to accommodate. Now we've got the squadron kind of is irrelevant for half the <laughs> yeah. game now. Yeah, it is. Um, no mention of squadron that much though. No, I don't think they're great content, but it's no. just it's a system that they've kind of left behind now. Yeah, yeah. 
Um, so four player trials, that, that essentially means that their main goal here is to make it so that you can do the whole MSQ without having to match make with any players. Like Necessary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even when I, I first started as a DPS, every time you hit that Q wall, mm -hmm. it was like 20 yeah. minutes wasted. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, it's bad. And also, rem this is future proofing because I like mm. Jorgi said earlier, one day 14 is not going to be this big. And it's going to be worse to, like, get into stuff. So that's good. Um, also, uh, patch 6.1. That is patch 6.1 will make a Realm Reborn. Oh, that's patch 2.0. Scenario duties <laughs> trust compatible. So that means good. <laughs> good. Yeah. <laughs> that's good. Um, There's a lot of dungeons. Basically everything except for the hard modes. Yeah. Well, no, because... The... No, 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 no. What? <laughs> That's only no, no. 2.0. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. going sorry, through 2.1 through 2.0. Oh, 3. Sorry, 5, 2. 5. 2.0, yeah. Yeah, but also, they're only doing main scenario dungeons, so dungeons like um, Cutter's Cry, Orm Vale, they probably will not program in trusts for. Yeah, and yeah. We, they're luckily squadron compatible, so that yeah. I guess that... I guess maybe going forward, squadrons will be for the non-MSQ stuff. Yeah, but what... Possibly, yeah. What's very exciting is that they, for the um, the the older dungeons, uh, the trust NPCs will be, uh, as they said, lore appropriate, uh, which means yes. you might actually do a dungeon with members of the Adventure Guild, which I think is really cool. Uh, because, I like that. Yeah. What if one of them? I mean, there's only one appropriate dungeon, but what if you sneak in with Edda's band before they go mad? <laughs> That would that would be it's cool. Unlikely. I mean, that, but yeah, there's only one dungeon they could really do that. Yeah, in, that would be Sestasha. Yeah, it's nice that they like. That would make they're you. They're gonna change over time. That would really add to the story, though, because that would be as a player mm -hmm. the first dungeon you do with. Like, so that's the first dungeon you do, and that mm -hmm. they're your first crew, if you will. So yeah, maybe it makes more of an impact. It would be cool. First, Sestasha be. Um, Edda's crew, and then uh, Tamtara be Dolores Bear and his friends. Mm -hmm. If you remember who they are. Oh yeah. When yeah. you get to Copper Bell, when you get to Copper Bell Mines, you discover oh they all died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, they also talked about how some of the older dungeons need. Uh, is that on a different slide? Uh, no, no, no. This is just all on this slide. Um, so some of the older dungeons have issues with um lighting and just in general are poorly optimized and i think they're mostly referring to 1.0 they bring up Todorak, which mm. has another uh very uh, exciting change coming but we'll just talk about that mm. first the 1.0 dungeons are we know literally just the 1.0 dungeons imported into a game engine they were not designed for and Mm -hmm. they had to, like, block them off, but the rest of the 1.0 dungeons are still there, like, loaded in. Um, so I think what they meant by that is that they're probably going to cut some, you know, some of the, sh the old shit off and optimize it better, mm. in better mm -hmm. like, improve the lighting quality. Um, but they also mentioned they're, that they're going to remove the the horrible goo on the floor that slows you down. It's going That's away! Changed. Bad change. Bad? How dare Everyone you? must suffer forever. <laughs> no, no, I'm glad that they're removing Even when that. you jump over it, it should go. <laughs> it does still make that noise when you jump I over know, it's it. It's annoying, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. That's sad. Yeah, so, uh, but no, that's not. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's that's uh, that's exciting. Um, so I will imagine we're going to see changes to Todorak. Uh, what are the one point? Um, Cutter's Cry. Um, um, what other 1.0 dungeons do we have? We have uh, Orem Vale, Thousand Moors, Orem Vale, Zamil, 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 Darkhold, yeah, Zamil, Zam Zamil, uh, Darkhold. <laughs> um, okay. I like the um, visuals of Totorak. It feels like a proper dungeon. So I hope I don't yeah. disagree with that. Like but Orenvale and Dungeon Zamile could be the same place. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, well, yeah. 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 Okay, but now another big bomb was dropped. Cape Westwind. This one actually 
like uh, the the Totorak one is a bit of a joke. This one is actually sad. This one's kind of sad, but understandable. Um, Cape Westwind will be removed as a duty, um, <laughs> um, well, and will instead become a solo duty during MSQ. Oh, so it's so sad. It's well, sad, but let's they... do that minimum eye level before <laughs> he goes away again. Yeah. yeah. It's um, like they said, like it doesn't make any sense that it's that easy to kill because he's supposed to be a really important Garlean. Um, no, but that mm. was made it even more funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, they didn't want it to be funny, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's um, the, goodbye to Cape Westwind. Uh, and also, Castra Meridianum and Praetorium will become four man dungeons. Uh, with Ultima Weapon as a separate four-man trial, uh, and La Habrea being an instanced solo <sighs> duty. But That's those a lot are of change big as well. changes. Yeah. yeah. What's happening to MSQ Roulette? It's probably going to go it's away. It's probably going to go away. I would. I would assume. The big XP is gone. Yes. Well, they may. Maybe there'll be a new roulette that will give us something. I mean, mm. they can just chuck them into the. Leveling or 50. level fifty. Yeah, I said, yeah I like Yuri said. Yeah, the capstone roulette. I said this during the yeah. live coverage. Yeah. So that's kind of, kind of sad, but is it? A little. It's a. It's a good change. I think it's a necessary change. But I, I, they did yeah. feel like epic moments at the time. Well, although we're... to be fair, yeah, we're gonna have to. We'll all have like one duty now in our logs that will now be incomplete. Maybe the Ultima thing? Like, yeah. we won't have the tick the ultimate, next to them, so we'll have to go and redo ultimate, and clear them just yeah. to make sure we've got Yeah, the, the Ultima tick. trial. Yeah. That's going to um, be weird. If Praetorium is being reformatted, that means that, like, it'll probably end at the Gaius fight? Or the first Ultima weapon fight? Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 True. I guess in um, the Ultima's Minstrel's Ballad... Is that supposed to be the part where Gaius is controlling it in the early? Yeah, part, that's right? yeah, yeah. So <laughs> maybe it'll cut off there because then the trial will naturally follow into the extreme. Mm -hmm. Maybe, mm -hmm. yeah. And then La Habrea is just no more. No, no, La Habrea is a, a, is yeah, a solo, is a solo, solo duty. duty, so we'll never see him again or fight he's, him again. He's the Xenos of yeah. two point oh. Yeah. That is a huge change. And also, obviously, as if you're reading into it, like, four-man dungeons, that means trust compatible. That's why they're doing that, so they can yeah. add the trust mm -hmm. to it. Um, yes. Um, so that's, um, that's, um, that's that part. Um, moving on. Um, so that's... Oh, oh wait. Say yeah, go on. Eight, eight player trials are not getting any trust compatibility, at least until 7.0 or later. Yes. Mm. Right. There's not a lot so of you, them until so you, Heaven's Wood. Yeah, so even then, you'll still have to queue up with the Duty Finder, yes. even if you mm -hmm. want to play solo for the most part. Yeah. Okay. Then perhaps the biggest news in this live letter, I would say, is that 14 far, yeah. is getting mm -hmm. its first graphical update. And he said they're, they're saying the first graphical update, despite, you know... 14 has had graphical tweaks before, like remember Heaven's Word, we got DirectX 11 support, which added like uh, reflections and shadows. But this is the first time they're actually making like changes to the game. Like we're talking texture updates, we're talking shaders and all that. So this is a big, this is a full on graphical mm -hmm. update. Um, so they, um, they made it clear that this is going to take a while. So we're not going to get everything at once. Um, and starting i think they said that they've already started they've they're like a week yes. sorry a month and a week into a month, this a month and a week yeah. so they actually haven't been working on it for that long i'm surprised they had as much material as they had to present to us yes. at this point yes oh, i think they're still experimenting a bit yeah yeah um well, yeah yeah uh the the um the, they'll be working on this throughout 6.x um and they are aiming um well, they say that it's well, it's planned for implementation in 7.0. I really love the second bullet bullet point, uh, which to me almost means nothing. Where they say aiming for mm. screen wide aesthetic appeal suited to a multiplayer environment. What? <laughs> which? <laughs> what, what does that mean? Well, what they mean what they mean is that this is a multiplayer game. 
they need there are limits to what they can do but they want it to be as good as it can be within a multiplayer environment right it needs mm. to be able to run on computers mm. um yes so um you have to keep that in mind that being said that almost like lowered my expectations a lot i'm like oh okay i see but what they're about to show us is actually quite impressive um, they are also planning animation and lighting system updates as well to the game, which they'll also, they also show, they, mm. they have receipts for a lot of this. So, uh, we can, we can actually look at that. Um, yes. So again, they specified, and they did this a lot during, um, this Adam, live letter. Yoshi P said that you must repeat this to yourself as you go to sleep every mm -hmm. night. Yeah. You cannot expect like massive like this is not going to be like um what's that game uh, horizon horizon yeah forbidden west is the one they kept referencing yeah that's not what this game's going to look like why because that's like the latest like next gen game that's that looks i mean the game looks incredible it does look very good um yes so i mean this is a, a multiplayer game it also needs to be able to run on people's computers uh so mm -hmm. yeah again Remember that. It Minim needs to be able to run on computers that are still weaker than PS4s. Yeah. Yes. Um, he, they did say, though, that minimum operating specifications will also change as of 7.0, which is natural. They are adding new stuff in here. Um, but for those that are worried, because I know that there's a lot of people that are worried about these updates, because maybe you don't have the best, like, gaming rig, you know? Um, mm hmm I wouldn't worry too much. They're not going to like. It's not. There are graphic settings. There are uh, the game's not. Oh gonna yeah, you'll be able to tone them down. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's fine. Uh, they also again, would, yeah, go on, Gary. I would suspect you wouldn't have to worry until at least eight point oh. So that's right. like four to five years away. So don't yeah, worry, yeah. you have plenty of time to prepare for this. Yes, uh, and by then. Prices will surely have fallen again mm -hmm. to normal well, levels. Well, we'll be up to like uh, RTX yeah. 6080s. So. You have to remember that even May for 7.0, like the PS4 is technically a dying console, like a generation. At some point, they're going to be like, the generation is Whoa. over. The PS5 mm -hmm. reigns supreme. Mm -hmm. That's maybe seven we'll all have away. PS5s in five years' time. Yeah. I mean, it might be affordable and accessible uh, at that point. Who knows? Available. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I think for the hardware, the PS5 is incredibly priced. Yes. Yeah. It's yes. just not available. If only it was in... Yeah. <laughs> It's it, yeah. It, the the it's a really 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 well everything cheap computer everything computer wise is very expensive now. So there might actually be a price drop in the PS Five as well. We're just getting used to like el like electronics being set to a certain mm -hmm. price level right now. But yeah, the PS Five is reasonably priced. Um, okay, yeah, and they also spe again specify that we'll try to accommodate uh, as broad a range of hardware specs as possible. So again, it's fine. <laughs> okay, don't worry. Well, then they show us a picture. They show us this horrendous creepypasta quality, like yeah. his eyes bled, the, a hyper-realist blood. It was so confusing when this was shown because we're like, wow! Because <laughs> like, that's good. Um, I mean, it is good. It's, but it doesn't work. You can see where it... Like it falls down. It's clearly got a massive uh, line along its neck that doesn't. Well, yeah, you're, you're not. Up. They haven't done the bodies yet. Um, That's, but like, it's a bit uncanny. Yeah, it's it a is bit, uncanny. It's... The hair also doesn't match the quality of the no, face. No, no. Uh, so uh, they tell us that this uh, they, they they will not be photorealistic. That's not what this game is about, and that's true. We've talked about that many times here. That that's why this it game it would age up. the game faster. Yeah, that's why this game looks so yes. good is because we have this like art style um, that you know helps. So they show us an actual picture of what they are aiming for, and I must say, that's a huge difference. Just in like really the eyes difference. is so it's so good um the hair got me most because of the like, oh, yeah. shadows within it yeah yeah oh yeah there's 
yeah, so the, they talked about how they've they've added, you know, there's new shaders, there's um I mean, there's yeah, just just look looking at the picture, you can see it. Like look like the current version of the Hure that we have there looks so dead like in the eyes compared to the new. <laughs> um it's incredible. Um they also show us from the side uh the Warrior of Light uh showing again the shaders. This one's nice. The shaders are really what. <laughs> yeah. Like uh it, it's the the eye on the far side is like nicely lit up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, ambient occlusion. Yeah, there's the, we have it all mm -hmm. here. Um, they also showed. And it that's off. the nice thing about shaders is it's just something you pass over the top. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, the Makoto looks good. Oh yeah, she also mentioned that the te the actual skin textures as well are are now like high resolution, which yeah. is yeah helping a lot yes. as well. Um, yeah. Oh no, Giga Chad. Everyone likes Giga him. Chad. <laughs> uh, he also has a little I think bit the of the is one of the more. Yeah, he does. I think the Rogan one is one of the more impressive ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it makes it look a little bit more realistic. Rogan's always kind of straddled an interesting line between looking like a human and looking like a Ronzo or something. Yeah, yeah. It kind of <laughs> pushes him more towards being like a, a human -y type person. Yeah. <laughs> the lighting makes his eyebrow, his brow look even deeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's. I think. It's, I think it looks really good there. I like it. Uh, and then there's a Lola fell. Um... Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes. Are I'm not. Yeah. I'm not sure about this, and I know that they said that they're still working very hard on this because I agree with them. Yeah. Updating Lola fells is very difficult. Yeah. To make it so that it, that I feel like Lola fells are the easiest to become really uncanny. Can we yes. just appreciate that if she lifted up her bangs, how big her forehead would be? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, God. I, wow. Now, can we appreciate how flat her nose is? Yeah, it Lana is. Thals have really. Think was it? I think you said Yorgi. Oh. They're the the pugs of Final Fantasy. 14. Yeah, they are. They're the pugs yeah. <laughs> <They're the> <laughs> of the fourteen world. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Let's try and get that propagated. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there. That's um, those are the character models. Um, again, I was very much blown away by this. Did not expect them to actually have this on hand. A month and a week after they started work on this, that this is they have this. Now, of mm -hmm. course, remember this is still work in progress. Like I said, a month and a week, so this can change. Um, but yeah, I very like impressive. It. I think it's uh, going to be interesting to see how it looks with like Lin Limsa or something. Yeah, it'll be nice, like mm -hmm. interesting to see it like in motion, like just in yeah in the game. Just uh, showing one character is easy. Showing yeah. like how a whole scene looks. Mm -hmm. Making sure it doesn't impact performance. That's yeah. the challenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they did not show us uh, the Ellison uh, or Highlanders, um, but the, like I think they even said that you know this is gonna go on for a while. You're gonna see more of this. We we will show you. Yeah. More oh no. Yeah. No well. Aura either. No Aura. No. Yeah. Or, or Rothgar. Uh, Viera. Or Viera. Or Rothgar. Yeah. Actually, God, Rothgar would be. The biggest one to see because they're so furry that's true that look really mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. that's a shame because right now they kind of just look like um Plasticine. have like a skin disease yeah if yeah. you look too closely <laughs> you know what i they're mean yeah, they, they, they the, the fur looks like skin but it's like yeah. skin yeah. tags yeah. all no over yeah. yeah um mm -hmm. okay um so um, moving on here, um, this, here are some of their primary features. Like we mentioned, a higher resolution textures on hair, skin, gear, everything related to like characters. Um, yeah. But also, they, this was very interesting. Um, well, okay, I, I can mention that. Are we on the gear? Yeah. Um, gear. Uh, not all current gear will be updated for 7.0. So, and this is something. This that is where it starts to fall down for me. Yes, this this where this is a little. I knew that this was going to be messy because it's there's a lot of mm. assets. Um, so we're going to have a period of time from seven point x seven point oh to like seven, maybe all the way up to eight point oh, where gear and te uh, gear textures are going to be wildly different. Like there might I be don't... some wearing old gear and some wearing the new high res gear. Uh. <sighs> I know that I that sucks, know, I agree. I'd, I'd, I'd rather them wait till 8.0 when they've done everything Wait. and implement it in one go, because it kind of goes against their screen-wide aesthetic appeal, because mm -hmm. it's not 
it's not an aesthetic if there's like uh me in my ultra hd chainmail next to <laughs> he and with his like low resolution armor or whatever well yeah. one of the easiest ways for them to test it is to just throw it out into the wild and see I, how I mean, people I react guess to it with, yeah 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 i just don't want to see like some random people who aren't shaded well, like the, flat characters randomly in the world. Yeah, that's the worst part, Malik, mm. is that this does not only go down... This is not only including gear. It also includes certain NPCs just mm. entirely, uh, yeah. specifically those that use unique faces, because um, they won't be affected by the changes, you know, to um, the base models. So that might be weird. If you're like this high-res <laughs> exactly. character next to this like PS2-looking mm -hmm. dude... You know, it's, and what if they use a unique face but a normal hairstyle? So the hairstyle yeah, is updated. Yeah. But their yes. face looks. But ugh, they, they did tell us that, that in all major characters, they're aiming to get those done to have so that there's yes. as little of that happening as possible. So I'm assuming people like Emmerich and like who else mm. do we like expect like big faces like uh, Edmont? Hien. Probably Hien. Aww. Yeah, no, they'll probably prioritize those so that we can. Um, I mean, it's it'll be fine. Yeah, it's going to be a weird be fine, time, but, but oh, yeah. Rain definitely. Anyone that is a trust will definitely get the. Oh yes, get for this. sure. It'd be super strange if they didn't. I'll yeah. live for it anyway. I'll find the. We'll flat get characters. used. We'll, we'll get used to it, and we'll be like, oh, he was a uh, who's. Uh, okay, you'll be like, oh, I did uh, that quest again the other day. He's a, he's a flat character. That'll be like a new thing yeah. when we talk about who's yeah, the flat we'll character the in this flat. patch. Has the flat character been mm. been updated? No. Um, the Matsuya has. Uh, oh God. Updated. Will the elephants update? Will that, I mean? Well, surely. I. I ooh, I don't know. That's a good question, actually. I. Will they? We ha we haven't we heard nothing about mobs, as well. No. Nothing what about if, like, what enemies. If the sylphs are known as the flat beast tribe because they couldn't update the sylphs <laughs> in time. Right. Yeah, because like, because we have um, kobolds as well in the main scenario. Like all of them are like in main scenario quests. So, mm -hmm. so Hagen recently. Yeah. So I wonder. We no word on that vulture. yet. Um, they mentioned improved material qualities to skin, metal, and fabric, etc. And they brought up an interesting detail from 1.0, which was specifically. Um, was it woven material or like cloth, I think? Mm -hmm. um, in 1.0, we had a cloth texture. Like there, you could mm -hmm. see it when you went close. That's why all the gear in 1.0 looks really good. First of all, it's very high res. But also if you wore like a robe, you could see that it was made of cloth. That didn't work mm -hmm. in the Realm Reborn uh, relaunch. So that's flat in our game. Like it's yes. like this weird, ugly texture. Um, so they're, they're definitely bringing that back. Uh, so that's going to be a big update to anything cloth-based in the game. Um, but no physics. No, they did mention that. That um, specifically. No Odin cape. Well, I wouldn't say that because um, we that's already a feature in the engine they currently have. True. So true. there's still hope for that because that's not something they have to add. I feel like that's just something you don't know, flick a switch. You know, there it is. Just add this material to the game and it'll work. Imagine if they just deleted the code. <laughs> that would be annoying um, it works for the wedding veil yes so it's already in There's the game weirdly good physics on that yeah that I'm pretty sure that is the cloth for the physics although does that only work when you're inside the chapel it only works inside the chapel yeah Other, when you're so outside it's a small it, instance yeah yeah when you're outside it just defaults to the bones again um, mm. so yeah they can they can definitely do that they didn't talk about that though um yeah, so that's um, that's happening. Uh, they also talked about lighting and shadow effects, which is sorely needed. The, the other players' shadows mm -hmm. specifically are uh, horrible. Awful. They, and trees. They, they, they brought specifically up Mare Lamentorum as a situation where they really wanted our shadows to like stretch really far. Uh, well, that would have been cool. <laughs> but our shadows are so low res that it looked like shit. So they couldn't do it. Mm. So our shadows are getting updated as well. Thank God. Yeah. Um, they brought some examples with them um, to show us. Uh, one thing that they brought up. So the next picture I'm going to show is from um, 
um, studium. Yeah, the studium. Uh, and they said that they were only able to place one light source in that whole scene. And then they used trickery for other things, you know, like, you know, I don't know what that trickery is, but there's only one real light source in the scene. Um, and in the uh, other picture, they've been able to do more. Um, you can mm -hmm. see it, that it, it really lights up the scene more. You see more detail. Uh, that you mm, do, don't you see do. otherwise. And he specifically... It darkened that tree, though. It did darken that tree. <laughs> but it also... I think that's because it's not being lit by the artificial light source. Yeah. They yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, look at the desk. It now casts a shadow. Mm. Mm -hmm. There's it a lot really of... Good. There's a lot of shadowless objects in 14 that you don't really think about nowadays because we're so used to the graphics in the game. But just that little touch of having that desk now have a shadow is... It's very nice. Um, don't pay attention to anything like. in the background that don't have shadows yet. No, no, no. Don't look at that. That's uh, no. But like important. that, that soft light in between the two Nautilus things. Yeah, looks yes. really good. It does. Yeah. Um, yeah, because what they'll do in fourteen to like uh, make it look like there's a light source is they add that weird glow, but it doesn't actually it hit just anything. Paint it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It's like uh, campfire. Some I don't think they cast yeah. a shadow. They just uh, hello. Mm -hmm. For some reason. Mm. Um, and then they wanted to show us how they now, because they can now use more than one light source, they can paint with light in a way and add more color to a scene. So they showed us this. Um, um, of uh, this is uh, Titania. Um, this kind of uh, starts pushing me towards like um, early two thousands bloom. <laughs> um, yeah, well, well he did specify this is not yeah, actually what it's yeah. going to look like. It was just to show what they can do. But mm. I don't mind. I think as looking at Titania, the um, mm. the lighting on their dress, mm -hmm. just that that's actually cast from somewhere. That looks yeah, so good. It does. Mm. It really does. The shadows. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the shadow, oh, God, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the shadow Even is Muslim much improved. Has a good shadow. Yeah. 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 So. Yoshi P explained that he had the designer specifically use red light for the second example because to his uninformed eyes, he wasn't able to necessarily notice the differences as well <laughs> without making it more stark. He wanted a That's more dramatic. Fair. Yeah. It, it does show it off yeah. quite well. Yeah. There's even weirdly more detail in the stained glass and stuff, but that might just be this picture. He says that there is not any more detail in the stained glass. No, he did. Yeah, he did. But he did mention that you could see more detail in the... Like, for instance, if you look at the far right, you can actually see the details of the... Oh, yeah. The thing at the bottom yes. there. I don't even know what it is. Is it a, is it a couch? I don't know what that is, but... Yeah, it's like it's a chair like a or something. Stool. Yeah, yeah, Manager. yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so that's really cool. And then they talked about the um, metal texture in the game, which uh, currently in fourteen kind of we kind of just accept that it's supposed to be I metal. Think it, yeah, it looks okay. But yeah, it it's looks reflective, okay. so that's okay. Yeah, but once you see the picture on the right, you're like, oh, oh. yeah, okay, that's what it's supposed to look like. Yes, how nice that looks. Yeah, it uh, it's it's shiny and reflective, and it's. Um, didn't they mention that? Didn't they say that after seeing the picture on the right, the picture on the left kind of just looks like like brass? Like that's just like this yeah, is, yeah. Like garbage. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's fake. At yeah. this at this point, Yoshi P also had to respond to chat. This is not his home. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Like the yeah, those the red things with like the garlic bulbs or whatever on top. Oh yeah. 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 It's crazy that we would have accept we accept what's on the left. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's metal. Yeah, I know. It's... When ha like they actually look like shiny, reflective. It's... Yeah. This is good. This yes. one's really good. Yeah. The next one, f this is the one that blew me away because another part of the this is not just about like okay adding reflections to gold and like making it having more lights it's also about mm -hmm. like being able to do more with the scene because you have more to play with and they show this example of um what's this place called in thavnir uh, the first place you go to in thavnir yetli mad yes uh the the docks there mm -hmm. the picture on the left 
compare that That's to the neat. picture on the right. It Look looks like a PS2 screenshot compared to what's on the right. They've compl the They've been able to add more stuff in the picture, but not only that, they've changed what the stairs look like. Like they actually, yeah, that looks like that's just one like module that they've just slammed in there. Like, oh, we have this spare thing. Mm -hmm. We'll just add some weird texture mm -hmm. on that. But this like has l more layers to it. It's like f kind of old and falling apart, made of different materials and parts. Uh, they've added some ground textures. There's some grass, which is something we're going to talk about in a bit. There's barrels, there's... This just looks more like people live here. Like, there's this is... Boat ramp. Yeah, it's a boat ramp. Um, the picture on the left kind of looks like this is a stage where a play is going to be yeah. played. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And on the right is, like, yeah. people live here and work here. I think he did clarify, this is not necessarily what they're no. oh, yeah. going to make Yedly Mad looks like. This is more a test of how many objects they can place and how many different textures they can have in one particular scene. Yes, yes. They may still are... change the stairs to look like this, but I don't think there'll be as much visual clutter. Right. Yes, yes, yes. These are no. all mock-ups, just mean, to show. Yeah. The annoying part about this is that this, <clears throat> unlike the shade, you know, shade you can toggle on, this is like work that a map designer has had to put in. Yes, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's mm -hmm. going to be difficult. You know, they can't expect them to go through every zone and just chuck in loads more stuff. Yeah. Yes. That's true. Um, what uh, will happen with just the flick of a switch is grass. This is what blew me away. This is the one for me. Yeah. That I was yes. so impressed with. Oh, it was so funny. The texture of it. Yeah, because this is this the whole grass debacle is something that stretches all the way back to 1.0 when we didn't really have grass and then when a realm reborn came out we we're like oh we're gonna have grass and there was like a grass slider or whatever like settings in the menu and it was a whole a whole thing um we're getting better grass everyone <laughs> we're getting better mm -hmm. grass it was oh. funny because when they talked about it it was clear that yoshi p was really bothered by the low quality grass in the game because when they did um apparently when they do um the grass is generated like it's automatically generated auto generated yeah. it's procedurally generated yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and when they make cutscenes the people who make the cutscenes don't see them apparently until like they're done when the game is like I don't. He explained it as well, if. Well, I, I think it's the cutscene makers and the people that make the grass are different people. Right. So the people that made the grass didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> it was impacting the cutscene. Um, he specifically brought up uh, uh, the scene in Elpis when um, what's his name? Uh, Hermes first takes off his mask, I believe. Yeah. There's uh, th there was just grass that popped up all over that scene, <laughs> and Yoshi was like, "We can't have this. Just remove the grass." So there's no grass in that scene. Um, but when also when but you there's look, no grass in that area. No. <laughs> uh, so there's um, if you look at the current grass, that is some low quality PlayStation One grass. Yeah, it's really bad. Mm -hmm. uh, in the new one, I mean, that's grass. Mm -hmm. It's really. I mean, you know, I'm. It's not. Yeah. Like a May AAA modern super duper amazing grass but it's really nice stylized grass yeah that, mm -hmm. you know it looks really it's lush yeah it looks like it can fill the whole area it looks really good yes yeah don't look too closely at the flowers but the grass looks yeah. very nice <laughs> the flowers while flat have a nice enough texture on them that it... they would look nicer at a distance yeah you're not supposed to sit work. and look at it this closely no but no. to run through this looks <clears throat> It look, you know, it yeah. looks nice. Yeah, it does. If they can add in, um, like displacement when you're running through it and it shakes, now that would be. <laughs> Ooh, you're asking a lot now yeah. for this game. That could be like there could be like only for 50 the player. people. Yeah. Only for oh, the player. Okay. Also, oh, remember, it wouldn't be too resource intensive. But mainly, remember that, that falls into the shadow problem. Then remember that no. the the grass uh, reacts to wind, though, so it might look good when oh, the true. wind ripples yeah. through. <sighs> The Azim mm -hmm. steps. Remember when Stormblood came out and we were like, "Wow, this is just flat green." Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's true. Could fill the whole zone. <laughs> okay, there. I don't know if they're gonna do that, but I think could actually because it'll just be like limited to like a certain distance. I don't think you could be able to see all of the oh, steps. Oh no, then it'll the turn into black desert. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so um, they continue with now background, their goals for background visuals, um, which uh, includes additional lighting points. Um, 
improved visual quality, depth, and immersion. Um, it was also clear, by the way, when they talked about this, that this was something that was important to them, to like the team as well, because it kind of hindered their creative vision when making cutscenes. Mm -hmm. mm. So that's also why they're doing that. Not just because we keep, you know, crying for more. Um, they also agree that they need to do this. Um, higher resolution shadows, uh, increased movement, decreased flickering oh. effects. Thank that's so God. Important. That this is, is one of the biggest issues particularly in cutscenes, you can sometimes see this light flickering across your face in a really, Gosh. like, unnatural yeah. way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, of course, the improved textures to metals and fabrics. Um, and more and better auto-generated greenery. Increased resolution, variety, etc. They didn't really touch on the variety bit, but I'm assuming that just means, like, different, like, strands instead of, you know... the Because the, right now, yeah. I think there's just one JPEG... Uh, or or a PNG because it has transparency. It could be a JPEG with transparency, but let's say uh, a PNG, uh, and that's it. And that's just copy pasted, or, or you know, mm -hmm. throughout the whole world. Hopefully, they have more, so we don't see that. Um, okay. Um, oh yeah, there was also a, f a fog and ambient effects as well. That, that that's also being tested. I, what if we that's get good. like volumetric fog? Dude, <laughs> we kind the closest we had to that was in Yangsha. And it yes. looks good. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would like that. I would like whether it, you know when fog actually like, oh, and you could run through it and it like walks yeah. around your character. Oh, wow. no, I know that that's not gonna good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's crazy that this game's had like really nice really? god yeah. rays since Heavensward or whatever. Yeah, and yet it's had the it's like, probably the industry's trashiest shadows from trees <laughs> like yes. ever. Yes. Uh, the fog changes could really improve your first visit to Ilmeg. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it could. That's true. Maybe uh, some high quality rain, Georgi, for when we get to that now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God, I hope they change the rain. Because the rain Ruin. does not look oh, good yeah, in this game. The old, mm. Yeah, the old rain was better than the new rain. Yeah, I agree. Because I remember when they changed the rain like system with Stormblood, uh, and it just never, was never it the same. so bad. Yeah. It's just... Uh, a PNG on the screen. Yeah. Or we gift. used to have different rain before Stormblood, uh, which maybe it wasn't that good, but I definitely... It felt good. I just don't like... When it like... dropped on the floor. Yeah. The... Whereas this is just like in front, you know, it's just a, a visual. It just looks like someone did like a line in paint and then they just uh -huh. repeated it and then they're running it across the screen. <laughs> it's a bit harsh, mm. but it, it, it doesn't look good. <laughs> Um, I don't know why they changed it. They made it bad. Yeah, yeah. But I guess we're used to it now. But yeah, please increase the weather effect. Like, oh, that could yeah. be so good. We need, we need that. Um, yeah. So they also said that uh, upgrades will be tuned to the maximum extent that performance allows. So they're they're tr sort of trying to like please both ends here. Like people that want high end graphics and those that are worried that they mm. have to like shell out a lot of money just to be able to play the game um but yeah so uh that's um yeah okay so I that's, this that's is in another slide but they did talk they did talk again about how they are planning on optimizing for ps4 so you can either optimize for frame rate okay. or yes we need a graphical talk, quality we need to talk about that because yeah they brought they specifically brought up the ps4 and um they i think they even talked about like the support of PS4 specifically, and they 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 said we are going to support the PS4 through 7.0, um, which to me sounds a lot like what they said in Around Reborn with Heavensward, because they said we will support the PS3 through Heavensward, um, but that there will be differences. Uh, and the PS3, mm -hmm. uh, Heavensward running on the PS3, for those, I mean, there's probably people in chat that played Heavensward on the PS3, and you know the pain, especially at, like, 3.5. Like, at that point, whew, it was hard, wasn't it? <laughs> it was, you were playing at, like, 20 FPS and had loading times mm -hmm. of, like, 30 seconds to get in places. 30 seconds? Ooh. 30 more seconds like or more. Minutes. Yeah, it was more. I, I, <laughs> I was being nice. More. Yeah. I've suffered some PS3 players back in the day. Good yeah, Lord. yeah, it was pretty it I was could get through bad. the rest of the Shroud before they've logged, you know, loaded into the first part. Yeah. 
So I, I it, it kind of sounds like we're going to get sort of that experience for PS4 players now where the game will slowly start to like really lag behind. They're going to add mm-hmm. a, an option to the PS4 where you can choose frame optimization or quality. Um, so there is a graphics option there. Um, mm-hmm. which the I believe the PS3 didn't even have. Like, it, it probably no. was running on optimization just... mode all from the get-go, and yeah. oof, oof, poor thing. Um, but yeah, that's I. it's happening now, I think. I think we can officially say that the meme PS4 limitations is in full swing. <laughs> it is coming. I've already seen it. I'd give it, uh, I'd give it two expansions before they really I th- think about cooking it. I think... See, I've thought that as well, but Lakeel's... Well, you, you think ha- it's going to go away earlier. You have to remember that two expansions from now, like think about how much time that is. The it PS4 is, is officially it is four to five years away. Yeah, the PS4 is officially actually, almost yeah. dead. Like we are on a different generation, technically. Like the 8. only reason is, to- is the earliest it will go. I think I yeah I think eight point is is where they'll probably cut it i think i think it's weird for them to keep the ps4 after that point considering the fact that it's 6.1 and they're talking about adding you know graphic op- graphics options for the ps4 for performance versus quality mm-hmm. and they're going to support 7.0 which has the big engine upgrade it makes sense for me that 8.0 is the cutoff point for the ps4 i do agree with chat that if for God forbid that if PS5 availability issues continue even through to 8.0, they might consider keeping it around for another expansion. Yes, but like that's unlikely. That, like that's a very worst case scenario. At that point, Sony must be struggling. Like there might not even be a, <laughs> a Sony at that point if well, they can't push true. their PS5s out, but in four years. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I think I think if now we are in different times, I'll say that. But I think 8.0 is probably in, that's my prediction. Maybe, well, time will tell, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wouldn't worry, PS4 players. You still have at least two more years, two four more years before. Um, yes. Yeah, before you have to mm. think about getting a PS5. You have yes, to think about how was. long four years is. That's a long time. It was about seven years from PS4 to 5. Yeah. So the PS6, theoretically, would be... It know, would be on the horizon 9. at point. 9.0. Yeah. Also, I think the PS4 well, would be 14 years old yeah, by the time a, it, 8.0 It doesn't comes feel out. like it's that old, but it really is old now. Yeah. But also, console generations are extending... It's yeah, console generations I, are getting have, longer than yeah. they used to be. Yeah. It's true. I, I don't envision PS5 dis- because the, it hasn't really kicked off yet. No. <laughs> Time will tell. I, I'm still gonna. I'm still gonna guess 8.0 being the end, but we'll see. Uh, if not, we're going to start having some real uh, holdback from the PS4. Four years from now, the PS4 is going to be, at least in my eyes, quite ancient. Um, but we'll see. Okay, moving on. Um, um, So now we're on to the third chapter, uh, continuing to provide regular updates on an appropriate schedule. (laughs) Wasn't this a mug mail? What did you say? Wasn't this a mug mail about... um... No, no, that's later on. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to that, yeah. Yeah. Uh, So uh, 6.1. So for uh, the roadmap for 6.1, for planned major updates, they, of course, have the main scenario update. Hildebrand is coming back. and Somehow. And they talked about Hildebrand quite a lot. And then they didn't even bother men talking anything about Tataru's Grand Endeavor side quest series, which starts with 6.1. How... Dare they? <laughs> there was a lot of discussion about that. I think um, I think it might be a disciple of hand land quest line because that's, that's Sounds kind of her like thing. It. She's opened a shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, that might be interesting. Wants it to grow to be. I guess she wants it to be like Rowena you know, denim blue jeans or something. Oh, <laughs> could yeah. be the equivalent of the Ishgard restoration for this expansion. Could be. Yeah. Could be. Um, Side quest series. Yeah. 
very specific. If, uh, it's like a long if, adventure thing. Yeah, but if it isn't Disciple of the Hand or Land, it could be what leads to us getting our new outfit for eight point a seven point oh. That's true. Oh yeah. Although then it would almost be required in a way. Just not required. You don't <clears> need a new outfit. Uh, Star thinks we do. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, there was more. Myths of the Realm, uh, of course, mm -hmm. number one. New series. Yeah. Uh, the new PvP, uh, Crystalline Conflict. We have to, like we said, we need to do Wolf's Den one last time on stream. We have to remember oh, yeah. to do that. Um, Arcasadara, Tribe Quest, and Dailies. Now, they talked about that a um, little bit because Tribe... The Beast Tribe and, like, Tribe Quest thing, they kind of want to go away from calling it that. Uh, so um, they haven't, they did, they don't have a name, like a new name for it yet. But so for now, we're still, well, they've, yeah. they've excluded the word beast yeah, for beast now, is but gone. they still want a better term to describe yeah. it. Yeah. So Although with it, uh, with Matanga, it's apt. But... <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, uh, all done. You're such an all done syndicate member. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, also Dragon Songs. Uh, well, how do you say that? Reprise? Reprise. Yeah, yeah. reprise. New Ultimate Duty. You could say Reprise. Okay, so both. Mm. If you're like a okay. wanker. Oh, I <laughs> oh, see. Okay, I see. Ah, Reprise. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. That uh, was left field. <laughs> that was very left field, very aggressive. I like that. <laughs> okay. Uh, and also, Ultimate. I'm so excited for yeah. the Ultimate. Oh, the Ultimate Dragon Not Songs. Not to do it, obviously, but I love, I love the race. It's the only race I care about in this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so fun to watch. Yeah. And it's very mm -hmm. Until some idiot, like, data mines the strat. Yeah. Yeah. No, that ruins Don't it. Don't ruin it. No. Uh, and Ultima's Bane is the Unreal, released with 6.1 as well. I do want try us to try Northern. and do this, because yeah. it's right. not Leviathan. That's true. No, Ultima's quite a fun fight. Yes, yes it yeah. is. Yeah. I remember enjoying Ultima back when it was relevant. Yeah, yeah. Oh, whoops. Whereas yeah. the others have been absolute snorefest fights. Yeah. Especially Leviathan. <laughs> I don't think Titan was a snorefest, I just think it's... Titan was hard. It's 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 conceptually outdated. Yeah. 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 Shiva is a snorefest and was slightly overtuned, maybe for. Uh... Yeah, Shiva was overtuned. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah. And Leviathan just sucks. Mm -hmm. Um. Also, with six point one, the trust system for a realm reborn. Uh, a realm reborn's main scenario That's dungeons. Cool. That's good. Mm -hmm. Um. Yes. So the new calling card style UI with uh, that's. Just the working title. Le we don't have a name. Useless, but so nice. Yeah, it's a nice thing to include, and you're gonna. I can tell you now, this is gonna be the seasonal event reward that you're gonna oh, get for the next year. Yeah. In the same way that it was with equestrian roles, and I guess mobiles right now. <laughs> yeah. Do you think this will be something we can buy on the Mog Station as well? I think oh, we've talked about this either gonna be yeah. that. It's either gonna be that. With what Gyogi said as a mm -hmm. seasonal, or this is going to be the glamour, the eggy glamour, and it will add three unique styles, and then you'll <laughs> not be able to touch them again for five years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, new hairs... I'm excited for that. That's that is kinda exciting. Because like... when you do searching for one people, you'll be like, oh, you've gone for that, have you? It'd just be nice. <laughs> and if there's some rare like... ones, you know. Yeah. I like that so... they don't have a name for it, considering it is in... for 6.1. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. Yeah, well. Um... They'll probably call it Carly... Calling Card or something. So, yeah. Because they can't mm -hmm. think of anything else. No. <laughs> um, new hairstyles for Rothgar. Um, Yay! Also with 6 you'll be new heads to... for Rothgar. Mm -hmm. mm, new well, heads. hopefully it means that they can just go to the aesthetician to at least change between the two hairstyles available to them yeah. for each head style. Yeah. Uh, also, Ishgard Housing, we'll talk about that a little, little later. Um, and mm -hmm. the custom deliveries NPC is Emilion's. I don't... That's unexpected, isn't it, really? Yeah. But... I don't love it. No, I don't love it. I don't think... I hope she'll never die. I hope yeah, that's true. I I really that's hope that's true. I really hope that she they don't give her, her us the dress oh, up yes. option for this Please one. Please don't. Especially yeah. This is like an 
yeah. I, mm. Which is nice. This is an important NPC. Yeah, and it's kind of weird. So, but it, it, it I is... I mean, she's probably not going to join in very much story-wise from it. Like, Monago just appears sometimes yeah. in the background. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's sad. Um, that's true, but this might be a big lore dump for, like, Emilians and, like, the True. twins and all that. So this might well, be a the good Levier source. family in the general. Levier, yeah, all of them. We can read the diaries. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of doors in that house, so I wonder if maybe yeah, let, we'll get access. Let us into your children's room. <laughs> that would be nice. Like, instead, <clears throat> like every tear-up you get, you can open a new room to explore. Yeah, yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. Um, okay. The final reward will be Louis Soir's room. Oh my god, don't even. And it's just it's just Tupsimati on the wall with like well, Papalimo's well, that's destroyed. outfit on the <laughs> yeah. floor. Papalimo's skeleton like yes. hung up from, oh. the, from the ceiling. <laughs> and then, then Emilian goes, oh I like this... to play puppet master. <laughs> I am Papalimo. <laughs> and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> uh, and that's how they introduce what? puppet master as a new job. <laughs> Introducing. <laughs> Oh. One thing that I was thinking about that's kind of unrelated is that Amelia probably has the shortest hair in the family. That's true. True. Yeah. Everyone else has their hair braided, which artificially shortens it. True. Where she only has a ponytail. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe um, that's what the quest line will be about: growing her hair, <laughs> so she can get it braided. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Join in the family. Yes. Absolutely. That's 6.1. <laughs> Moving on to 6.2. <laughs> um, the trust system for 2.x is main scenario dungeons. Um, there you go. That's um, uh, the follow up. That's the patch. The patch is from Realm mm-hmm. Reborn. Uh, and trust system for two to three Heavensward main scenario dungeons as well. So they're moving on into Heavensward at that point. Oh. forward. I don't yeah. think we talked about this as much when we talked about it earlier. They did talk about. Well, primarily for these early dungeons, you'll be going with adventurer squadron, like members of the Adventurers Guild. For certain lore appropriate dungeons, they do intend to have allow you to have certain plot important people, like for example, Astinian in the area. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, I saw people theorizing that we'll get the horse in the vault, which will make it more painful. Oh, that God. would make it good. Yeah. Oh, God. Astinian will make rather than him just waiting at the end as well. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Makes no sense. Right. Uh, new weapon enhancements, which we speculate is probably the relic. Um, mm-hmm. So that's six point two. So we have to wait another patch before we can start doing mm-hmm. that. Uh, uh, but this, this, this is exciting. <laughs> new yeah, criterion du- <laughs> new criterion dungeon with variable difficulty for one through f- to four players this is the content that we probably wanted because we Hopefully. wanted harder four man content uh, and this one you can actually do four or three or two or one uh, and the difficulty will scale according to how many people are entering the dungeon that's great gonna be int- how does it decide you know, are you are you out of luck if you've not got a healer, a tank? I don't know. Like, how does it? I assume it has to be possible as any one role. Yeah. That's or true. any combination so of roles. Yeah. yeah. I don't like the name Criterion. Criterion is yeah, it's not a great name for it, but yeah, uh, exciting. Um, I I'm optimistic. Why not? Yeah, it's new content. Mm-hmm. It's something we they don't, don't have. Always, you know, they don't let us down that often when they actually implement anything <laughs> no mm-hmm. it, um, it will essentially mean that we'll have more than one dungeon in this patch yeah we should if we should, this is an equivalent in any way to it yeah i don't it's know if they new hard i don't know if they said criterion is the final name it does have um it's like no like, i think they it is just a conceptual name for now yeah that's fine yeah um island sanctuary as well 6.2 everyone that's when we get it confirmed that is confirmed um of course it didn't tell us anything so, else well it means we also won't get any information in the next live letter or the one after that or the one after but the one after that we will yes no we won't because the next two are oh, both yeah. for remember that 6.1 yeah that's gonna be po- oh. yeah so um oh, yeah. we'll um oh, we'll still have to wait we uh, 
they might tease a little bit. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah. They, Sometimes they end up showing us stuff from patches we're not actually getting next. Yeah. Um, I also, know what it is still. Yeah. I, <laughs> they they said some really vague shit actually during the live letter. They uh, I think it's something similar to what we've heard before. It's like you're in a separate zone. It's like your own. It's a it's a completely separate instance, and you, that's it essentially. <laughs> That's what they told mm -hmm. us, so... Mm. Wow. Um, 6.3... Also should mention that uh, this is not... There's more. There's Pandemonium, Four Hollows, Other Trials, mm. and more. This is just uh, the most important bits, but they also specified that there might be other things in here that they just haven't had mm. time to put in, or they, you know, there's there's all that. These uh, are yeah. non-exhaustive lists. Yes. They mm -hmm. haven't planned absolutely everything out at this point. Mm -hmm. What's What's really surprising here is... Um, well, first of all, 6.3 will have the trust system for the remaining Heaven Sword main scenario dungeons, the new deep dungeon, mm -hmm. but then the fifth ultimate duty. A new ultimate. We're finally getting them within a consistent schedule, maybe. Yeah. That's exciting. That means there's only. Let's. Don't worry. It'll get pushed back. It to might the get next pushed expansion back. Expansion like true. usual. <laughs> uh, 6.3. Like usual. That happened one time. Yeah, it happened yeah. once. Uh, 6.3 is also uh, the uh, first Island Sanctuary update, so that's that's cool. Whatever it, that means. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever that means. We don't know what it is. Um, 6.4 uh, slash 6.5. Uh, trust system for all Stormblood main scenario dungeons and Criterion that's dungeons. That's ambitious. Two, yeah, well, this is two... Remember, they, they were being sneaky oh, right, here. Yeah, These yeah, are yeah, two yeah, patches. Yeah, two, yeah. Um, Criterion dungeons 2 and 3, presumably 6.4 and 6.5. And additional area for Island Sanctuary. Whatever that means. Whatever that means. I guess you can expand it. Yeah. The reason they, they, they put these into one is because they're still working on these patches. So more plans for patches mm -hmm. 6.4 and 6.5 are being made. Yeah. So very exciting stuff. Uh um, you know that they put pound sign next to the two, but not the three. In Criterion Dungeons 2 and 3. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Okay. The pound signs working double double time. No, there, <laughs> you say no mention of relic, Lady Khan. They're they they talked about weapon enhancements for six point two. So yeah, I think there's nothing that might else that relic. weapon enhancement could be. No. No. I okay. Mean, what, literally, what else could it be? Let's talk about patch cycle. Um, when it's not that major. No, 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 no. It was uh, when this slide came up. It didn't show all of it. It only showed. The major patch cycle. Top part. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. terrifying. Because we'd yeah, already yeah. sort of talked about the fact that the game is old, we're preparing Excellent. it for solo, and I'm like, oh god, here it comes. This is the big one. This is the, like, they've saved this mm. for the end, because this is the, the negative. And we'd already been theorizing this based on, like, the, the scheduled uh, live letter time, so we're like... Mm -hmm. If that's only the first one talking about 6.1, then it's yeah. probably not going to arrive until April. Right. Well, the uh, patch cycle, which is has always been three point five one patch, uh, one major patch every three point five months, is increasing to one every four months, and that isn't a lot. It's still three patches a year. Yeah, um, it's not moved off schedule that much. It's two weeks, and they I don't mind. they said that they need essentially the dev team needs some time to like not. Mm -hmm fucking die <laughs> so there's yeah, a lot of work more time to you know mm. make they, sure it's at the high quality but take their time with it they have they there's also another have to slide live coming up that will yeah. explain essentially why this is <clears throat> a change they need to make yes mm -hmm. um they need an extra week for implementation and fine tuning um and they will also add an extra week for summer and new year's holidays um and if you don't agree with that you're a monster yeah so. these are humans they need to live lives as well mm -hmm. so um i don't really mind that at all um yeah they brought a, up a perfectly good and to be honest it's a neater schedule as well anyway yeah yeah the uh they showed off this chart uh which which shows us um how much stuff has increased um since 3.3 .3. so quests have increased from 60 to 80 this is 3.3 versus 5.3. Types of content hasn't really increased that much. Got from 9 to 10. 
uh, jobs has gone from 11 to 18 jobs to balance. Bosses, 17 to 23. But the cutscene thing is incredible. That's, that's the big one. That's like, okay, so it's gone from 2 hours, 25 minutes, and 57 seconds uh, to 4 hours, 30 minutes, and 26 seconds. So, But only one extra cutscene. But only one extra cutscene, yeah. So the cutscenes are on average longer, but they haven't increased mm-hmm. that much in, like... Uh, amount uh, the word count is also quite significant this is a jap in japanese characters 253,332 in patch 3.3 in 5.3 397,085 it's that's a lot, lot of a lot of that's text just for quests mm-hmm. that's just for quests uh, and the ui system word count in japanese characters from 100,637 in 3.3 to 242,618 which uh, is more than double so it's mm-hmm. that's for like minion descriptions and yeah. item descriptions and yeah new abilities we don't whatever. we obviously don't have to go through all this but it's it's all it's all gone up it's there's a lot of work to do and it, this is work that will just keep like there are certain things that will just keep go- getting bigger, like uh, jobs to balance, mm-hmm. and you know there's a lot. Um, mm-hmm. Even like races to equip with gear has gone from six to eight. So just think about how much and, that yeah. is to do. They still can't even keep on top of the Vieira and Rothbard, right. unfortunately. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, they they once again wanted to make it very clear that this is not a bad sign. It's just a sign that they need to like take care of their employees. Um, mm-hmm. They are planned. We are going for another ten years, so don't worry. This is not a sign of any decline. <laughs> this is just to be nice to the people that work for for the game. So yeah. that's that. Um, all right, they talked about housing. Uh, lottery, uh, we're getting that in 6.1. Uh, the, uh, what is it called? I always want to say the... Um, Empyrean. Empyrean is what it's called. Empyrean. Oh, um, okay. So the lottery, um, we don't have to go through all of this. We know how this works, but what they did mention was that each player may only enter the lottery for one plot of land during each lottery period. Each member may enter once when purchasing land for a free company. That's confusing. Now, how do they decide who wins, I guess? Well, you can have if you're so say you have a free company. Your members can buy, uh, enter the lottery for your free company, and then you get just to get more tickets into the lottery. So it's a higher chance of winning by having oh, your, so it's... your members enter more tickets. Oh, yeah. Um, but they can't spread it over multiple plots. No, you have to go. You you lock hmm. into one. Yeah. So yes, you, the nice. FC has to decide beforehand, I guess. But yeah, also every member has to pay the full price. So unless you have multiple 40 million gills yeah. to give out yeah. for multiple large tickets, yeah. unlikely That's that many FCs funny. are going to get many entries. True. So there are four purchase systems that are coming into the game. There's the lottery for FC and first come, first serve. And it's the same thing for uh, the private ones. There's lottery individual and first come, first serve. They actually talked about maybe adding some... First come, first serve wards, uh, but it the mm. the feedback live feedback was a really annoying part of the <laughs> live letter because I was very tired. Was when uh, he was like, <laughs> "Oh yeah, let's just let's just read chat," and there was just dead air for like three yeah. minutes. Him just sitting there staring at mm-hmm. the screen. Um, I don't agree. I think at this point the lottery system sounds fair. Just have it all be lottery at least now. Just when you're like mm-hmm. launching this. I mean. This makes sense for them to be able to switch it potentially in like on Goblin, mm. like yeah, if if no, they've yeah, got the lottery you. going, and then <laughs> and then like there's servers that have just like got a bunch of small houses fil- like empty. Yeah. What, How would you feel, uh, Georgi, as the only player on Goblin if you entered the lottery and didn't win? I'd be confused. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so that's that. Uh, they also announced the live letter. Um, they did actually mention that earlier in the in the um, in the stream, but um, the li- next live is that. on March fourth, and will be part time. one. Yeah, it's uh, it's eleven a.m. We've GMT. gone back to this one, which is good. Yeah, noon uh, Central European. Uh, 
and 10 p.m. And Australian 10 PM time. Australian, which that makes me suspect that it's not going to go for very long because no, that they means it's starting. Two hours. Yeah, because that means it's starting late for them as well. If yeah. it's starting at 10 p.m. for me, usually yeah. goes about uh, an hour or two, and then maybe uh, a bit of merch. Yeah, that probably means that it won't be translated. Uh, no, it won't be. Anymore. That's very true yeah. as well. Yeah, but that's a good time, even good for Australia. Yeah. Yes. I mean, there's. I've said this before. There's no bad time. Live loaders are never badly timed for Australia no, because we're essentially in the same time zone as Japan. Yeah. Oh, okay. We're missing some uh, slides here, but they also mentioned the uh, Endwalker album, which comes out on February twenty third. Uh, we've talked about that, so we this don't have to Thursday. Go. I did not realize it was so soon. Yeah. Yeah. But we need to okay, talk that about wind, wind up, up right. Yeah, gonna write. Mm -hmm. We talked about it before. This. <laughs> three hundred dollars for this. Um, once again, dollars. Once again, put ten. Once again, we are um, looking at a, a poster. I love the Square Enix merchandise store. It comes framed, Lakia. You get a free frame. That better be some fucking good frame because you can get frames for like. 10 bucks at that size. It doesn't look like it's a good frame. Mash no, it doesn't. It doesn't look like a good frame. What kind of frame looking like that would you. The, 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 um, the, uh, I cannot. Because I, be I know the people. whales are, are going to come and like eat me alive because they'll be like, um, it's a very high quality. Actually, it's a v extremely high quality. It's like a Picasso, actually. <laughs> it's a copy. They've it would printed be so it. so much better to buy a print of this for probably like $30. <laughs> And frame it yourself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that I three hundred dollars is obscene. <laughs> it is, and it, <laughs> it'd be really funny if like how it was made was like someone just went into someone's office in Square Enix and used their printer and just printed these out and be like, <laughs> so much money. Um, I I won. Remember that screenshot contest where they send you a print of your screenshot, and I won. Yeah. It. <laughs> yes. It's a a nice quality print. Mm. And they gave that away to me for free. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Surely three hundred. It's not printed on the office printer mm -hmm. in Square Enix for sure. Mm -hmm. Um. So. Um. Maybe I'll sell it. There you go. If you want to pay for that, you <laughs> are free to do so. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice screenshot. It's of Annex Trine. It's true though. That's true. Like, like it's like, just like people paying so much for NFTs. But at least this is a real thing. So you actually have it. I, I guess there's something in that. Yes. But. I don't know. Three hundred bucks. Is this the so, only one? A joke. No, no, no. There were many. There were multiple. No, no, no. There uh, were seven. I think yeah, seven different seven. designs. Yeah. This was but, funny I mean, though. Can you get multiple of design like three, or is it like a one-off? I'm sure you can buy more than one. You if you have it's not even multiple that unique. Oh no, right. Mela. No, no, no. They are just prints. It... They, they well, just. Yeah, and it's not like an NFT. No. Oh no. Not at all. It. it it's. Yeah. No. It's, you're mean... buying a poster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a. You might not know this, Mela. Pretty easy to replicate an NFT. <laughs> well, true. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I've yeah. been. Uh, I've been chucking loads of random people's on uh, Open Sea just for mm. a laugh in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, no, no. There's three hundred a pop. Three hundred a per print. So three hundred dollars. If you want to catch them all, you better you better open your wallet. You dig deep into that wallet because that's going to cost you. How much is that? Uh, quick arithmetic. I don't remember. Uh, three times. What, how many? Three times seven. seven. Yeah. That's two twenty one hundred dollars approximately. Yeah. Worth it. I. You know you. It's your money. You do what you want with your money. I'm not gonna. If you need money though. Oh, I don't have the last one. Uh, okay, never mind. I'm that was, that would have been a good segue. Yeah, it would have been down. I'm tempted <laughs> to just get this piece of art and make a canvas of my own. Yeah. From one of those canvas printing places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll pay like, what, $30? I might buy it so I can um, use the frame for my screenshot. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, oh, yeah, but of course. There's also something... shipping and all that. You know, there's a lot. There's yeah. a lot of costs here. Something funny that happened here is that there was... There were two behind Foxclon in frame on like on stands as examples, and Foxclon takes one down. <laughs> he goes to put it back 
but he can't put it back. Oh. So for the rest of the stream, he's just holding it. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so like Mela was trying to segue into, unfortunately, I don't have the slide. Uh, if you need money, um, Square Enix <laughs> is now hiring. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they are looking for a game designer and a graphics engineer specifically. That could be you. That could be you. Uh, don't know what the qualifications require. Since we you don't need to have fluent Japanese. Yes, I would well, assume yeah, you do. so. Uh, if I uh, translating it, it does say you need to be able to communicate effectively in Japanese. There you go. Uh, um, okay. Yeah. Well, Yoshi P, <laughs> game yeah, designer was... Yoshi P, said that you really only needed to know how to use Word and Excel, which is so untrue. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> he, he, fair. I yeah. can do that. Um, so go. I don't know if they've posted that job posting anywhere on the lodestone, but um, yeah, go check these it out. Are, I believe these are contract positions, but yes, Yoshi P said that like that's where he started off at Square Enix. So yeah, yeah, there yeah, is room for about upward mo movement. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> okay. So that's um, that's the first part, believe it or not. Um, there's mm -hmm. uh, there is more, but that's it for the the slides. There was a Q and A part mm -hmm. as well, and I want to start by because there was a translator there. Uh, I believe her name was Kate. Um, they switched yes. uh, Imi out um, with with her, uh, and that brought up the question. Well, Imi probably had to go to bed. Yeah, it's getting quite oh. late in America. <laughs> yeah, that brought up the question of where Koji Fox is. Uh, because a lot of people keep bringing up Koji Fox as this big uh, saint. Uh, and then Yoshi P said that Koji isn't the lead. Um, he's not the, the like the, the localization team lead anymore. That's that's Kate, actually. Um, oh, wow. And that, you know, and I'm like, <laughs> like, well, what does that mean? Koji Fox, he is now supervising, right? He's got a supervisor role, but he also, he's also very clearly working... He said on other pro other projects, I believe, but it's clear he's working on Final Fantasy 16. So oh, that's that where Koji good is. Writing. Yeah, so yeah. that's good. But don't Co besides just supervising, Koji Fox is still doing other aspects. Like specifically, they talked about the the writing of music lyrics, which yes. makes sense because he <laughs> would work closely with Soken on that. Yeah. And uh, he also works closely with Kate, obviously. So she will just ask him for advice and stuff. So I mean, he is her supervisor. He so is her supervisor. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so he's not out of the team, but he is he is uh, uh, busy with uh, sixteen right now. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So um, there was a Q and A where um, I believe this is from the forums, uh, right? Is it a? These are from the Discord subreddit. Uh, I suggest no, no. we move straight to this. Oh yeah. You mind oh, yeah, the, the questions from the forums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You mind to go to the, the I, bullet points? The, the, sh the shorter version, because we're okay. running out of time. Oh, yeah, we are I running out of time. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, let's just, let's just, We can do a full read maybe in another time, but maybe. probably not. Probably not, because there's a lot happening in the coming uh, weeks. Uh, okay. So the questions uh, are from the official forums. Um, so let's jump into them. So what was a Zem... Oh, yeah, let me also say, this was the speaker's live letter, if I may say so. The graphics updates mm -hmm. and then the Q and A was like, I am suspecting a lot. Of, some of the questions were from people that have watched this show and heard us discuss this and be like, mm. I'm gonna ask them because uh, <laughs> this, this uh, yeah, yeah, there were all, all so many of our questions that were being asked. Wow, yeah, this first question we're especially going to get to was our great discussion topic two weeks ago. Yeah, mm. yeah. What are you guys doing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so what was Azem up to during the final days? How did they part with Emmett? Will there be more Azem in the future? Um, they said it's a secret. We have an idea, but we don't know if we'll have a chance to talk about that in the future. You are the warrior of light. What will you have done? Yeah, so they're basically saying that like they may or may not go back and tell us exactly what Azem was doing mm -hmm. at the end of days, but even if not, you... Are essentially the same person, so just think of what you would do in that scenario. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, another pressing Don't let them die. <laughs> another pressing question that we have always been asking here ever since it happened: Why did Zenos appear in the final days? Why as a Reaper? This is a good question, right? This is the Great question. yeah. Never explained. 
Uh, and of course, because all of these questions feel like they're speakers' questions, they were all really good. Most of them were really good questions. Good job, everyone. <laughs> uh, Varys is his father. His grandpa is Solus. He's a direct descendant of Emmet Selk, passed down through DNA, dormant for a generation, but reappeared. Read Tales from the Shadow. Uh, shadows, there's a hint. I'm not fully satisfied with the answer. Um, no. Because... Why did it skip a generation? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it also, like... Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird to me, but whatever. Um, oh, yeah, it's uh, about the Reaper part. It's a secret why Sinos became a Reaper. It's not that they haven't thought about it. They just can't say. And that is the Bam, first of many... Back. Yeah, warning lamps mm -hmm. flashing right now that Sinos is still alive. Um, recessive genes. Yes. The yes. Asian, Asian genetics are recessive. <laughs> <laughs> like, like red hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, how did the unsundered Asians avoid being sundered? That's, That's a good question. That's a good question, yeah. Uh, Emmett implied Vanar let him live on purpose. She left a tiny. No, 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 not, em not Emmett didn't imply that. I think I think that should say Yoshi P implied that. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it does say Emmett here. Yoshi P implied Vana let him live on purpose. She left a tiny flaw in her sundering, a way for Emmett to wiggle through. It was her intention. And it just so happened that Laha he was with Laha Brea and Elizabeth at the time. Yeah. Mm. That's mm. convenient. <laughs> mm, little, little convenient there, but okay. Um, when Heidelin sundered the world, it was the limit of her power. She couldn't guarantee that Emmett would live. It was a gamble. Uh, yeah, so like I said, during the sundering, Emmett was La Habrea. Uh, Emmett was La Habrea and the Elidibus of the time. Was with. So this, what? Oh, Emmett was with La Habrea and the Elidibus of the time and escaped into the rift without being sundered. In short, the unsundered Asians worked together to escape the sundering. Okay. I wonder if you just don't talk about it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <sighs> it's a, it, it makes sense silly. why they didn't. It makes sense why they didn't talk about it in game. If that the answer why, yeah. is as like as so, matter of fact as that. Yeah. This this is. Yeah, I think I said it when we were covering this. This is why it kind of, we talked about like this should have been two expansions. There are some things that they feels like they didn't have time to like flesh out or explain properly, and this is like one of those things where mm. maybe more yeah. time had been required here. Um, Definitely, then they're in the game for you know narrative reasons. They've obviously not thought so deeply about it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know why she'd want. I, I mean, I know she was friends with them, but. She actively opposed them after a while. Yeah. Yeah, but she might have thought that, like, having, like, full blood, like, non sundered Asians in the future, maybe they would be able to work alongside suppose, the, yeah. the, the sundered people that can properly manipulate Dynamis. She wouldn't know what actually would happen to them afterwards. So right. True. That's true. true. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. She did, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, because well, we came from the future, true. Yeah. Well, now that I think about it, she kind of had to because she knew what ha was happening in the future. It's a big yeah. leap that has to happen now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Okay. Mm. All right. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> are there sundered Asians still around? What about... See, these are literally... these. We've talked about that recently. Oh, my God. Are there sundered Asians still around? What about Gaius's masks? It's a good question. Yeah, um, they still, they think they're still around. Where are they? They can't say. Gaius's okay. masks belonged, and they're, we're actually getting name drops here. They belonged to mm -hmm. Ultima and uh, Dudelophon. However, just because he has those masks doesn't mean he vanquished them. There's a lot in the story about what it takes to defeat an Asian. Mm -hmm. What do you mean, ugh? Ten more years of Asians. Yeah, yeah, but I suspect they won't be the primary villains at this point. No, or at least oh, I hope not. <laughs> no, Yuki, they've been <laughs> puppeteering in Merisidia for un unchecked for ages. I think, I think mm -hmm. Asians are just going to become the the new convenient like elegance. Like if something's happening, they're like, oh, but there was like there was a man with a mask, and you'd be like, oh, yeah, 
Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say how much time has passed in the 14th story. They tried to match it. Uh, so they asked about the time thing again, which... <sighs> that's one of those mm. things where you kind of just... You know, you don't need to, t- to think need about, to it. about it. Um, but they say they try to match it to you, the player, as if two, two to two and a half years have passed. The trailers don't reflect the game themselves necessarily so separate the separate them in your mind yeah so it's, just ignore the fact that the warrior of light visibly ages whereas no other character does well we'll mm-hmm. get isn't that a different question i think that we're going to get a separate question about that specifically i think that is yeah. yeah um we haven't had an example of someone who is unsundered be reincarnated through the ethereal sea maybe they'd be cooler than the average person yeah that was a question and that is actually what was said yeah that was maybe actually they what would was be said. cooler than the average person yeah. yeah. Own up. Which one of you was it? Because <laughs> the question, I think, was uh, because... Um, cooler. Was it because they... Imagine yeah, because it, Emma, they'd be cool. Because Emmett Selk and La Habrea are in the ethereal sea right Yeah. Now. So they were and like, can cool. they be reincarnated? And they're like, yeah, maybe they'll, maybe they'll be cooler than the average person. Um, they've completed all they want to do and would have no reason to reincarnate, really. So there you go. But the, would they be cool or not? <laughs> the that other was the crux of the question we didn't care whether they could or not you if they'd be cooler than the average person <laughs> the next question is one that we have asked and answered ourselves uh the mm-hmm. which the another speaker's question does anyone else know the name of the planet Ethereus? well that wasn't actually what the question was like they, they asked um what um will will you we be referring to the planet as Hydaelyn or Etheris. Well, the Warrior of Light, I think, is what they asked. Or no, I think they just asked, "Will people ask mm-hmm. to call it?" Um, and what they said was essentially what we said: uh, only those close to the Warrior of Light or those familiar with the ancient world leading up to the final days will call it Etheris. The average person will probably continue to call the planet Hydaelyn. And then Yoshi P had to go and make it m- to and muddle it up by going, there are people in the East uh, and in the New World who don't call the planet Hydaelyn, but something else altogether. So now we have to like deal with that as well, that there are many names. Uh, and um, so he said that they'll have to loop PR in going forward. There was actually a problem referring to the game's world as Eorzea versus Hydaelyn as well. So sometimes... I don't know how to describe, because we know that Yoshi P is the guy who sort of calls the shots for certain parts of the story. Um, I think Yoshi P does like, <laughs> I feel like it's like, he's doing like cowboy lore. Do you know what I mean? He just like, he just, uh, he's be yeah. like, we'll call it Etheris and not think about the ramifications of what that means. Mm. Like how that will affect literally all the lore in the game. Um, that's that's how I feel like Yoshi P is working. He's like, we'll we'll just do this now and we'll figure it out later. And this is one of those things where it's like, oh, Atheris is a cool like original name for the planet. Um, and now we're in this mess because I remember when Around Reborn launched, almost all the ads would um, um, almost always refer to the the world as Eorzea. It was. Eorzea, remember that horrible cringe commercial with your uh, Louis Wa? Mm. Never does he say mm-hmm. Hydaelyn. Only a Yorzia. <laughs> um, but uh, and then they shifted into Hydaelyn. That's why the game starts with Ah oh, Hydaelyn. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, and now we have many names for it. Yeah, we could just say uh, our star or something. That might simplify it. Just avoid referring to it by name. <clears throat> but who knows? I don't know how they're going to solve that going forward. Um, is Xenos truly gone? Now, this is the big question. Their answer, let me just say, is not a no. They say, Xenos' body is in a dimension separate from, from ours. We depicted his ultimate fate at length in a cutscene. Watch that and see how you feel. I feel like it'd be great if he came back to the story Mila. big time. Nay. But I know it's going to happen. He's- I think he could be a scion. No, you shut up now. I'm not against Xenos coming back, but that's only because I feel there are threads in his story that aren't complete. Yeah. That's yeah, true. but I feel like they've butchered his character too much already. Just let it lay. To well, rest. maybe I can understand that opinion as well. I'm I'm going to I'm this is how I think he's going to come back. 
He's going to make it out of there somehow. I don't know how. He's going to be he completely... He can turn into Shinryu. No, no, no. He'll be stripped of his powers. He'll be completely, like, shitty. And he'll need our help. And he will be the guy who will need to win the trust back from his people. And don't say it. Together they will rebuild Garlemald. And they will, <laughs> they will go into the Senate building, which is still there. And they will re rebirth Garlemald He's as the Republic of Garlemald. NPC. And we will <laughs> restoration. And then he will join the Scions. Yes. If Xenos comes back to rule Garlemald, I will stop playing this game. <laughs> and that is a promise. No, but he does not. He, he cares no, about Garlemald. He does Garl it nicely, Gyoki. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he joins the Scions. But then, in two expansions time, he goes dark. Yes. And he's suddenly this really yeah. big villain oh. again. He needs to, like, fight it. Because his <sighs> avatar is still in there. And it's like, he's got his internal yes. battles. He's like, oh, no, I can't turn to the dark side anymore. And turns into Zodiac again. <laughs> But uh, it goes to the moon. And, uh. <laughs> my friend, my enemy. Um, all right. Um, Never forget Stormblood when he was good. Mm, mm. Uh, mm. Okay. Anyways, um, this is funny. How did mankind's races become varied? Uh, so all the races during the Sundering. All. So this is the answer. During the Sundering, all life became incomplete. But that incompleteness yeah. allowed them to develop different racial traits. Over time, these traits diverged. We know that. We, Jurgen and I, we had... The, 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 our biggest question is, how the fuck did Lala Fell happen? Like, how... What on Half earth... the ether of a normal person. <sighs> Just imagine the horror as each generation they grow shorter, so, their noses start to like is, sink into their face. So here's the thing, Lakir. Maybe if we are to continue the thread that they are the pugs of the the Aorzi, of the high Delinian races. Yeah, yeah. They bred for these traits. Yes. Oh, I see. Under I the see. tutelage of the Grand Papota. Yeah, 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 <gasps> yeah. Um, and their eyes just like grew massive, like the, and they lost the uh, iris. No, they lost their pupils. Yeah, 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 yeah. On some of them. Yeah, the height doesn't bother me. It's their face that really scares me. Is that I don't care. Like people, we have people of different of heights like, all over. Um, them. The caracals or whatever the sheep are called. What? They have the faces of caracals? Is that what you're saying? You know, where they have the little nose that goes off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, okay, so he that's essentially what he says. So we they just adapted to the environments that they were in. Mm -hmm. So so the Makoto just grew their own ears and tail. Yeah. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> um, so Emmett mentioned the Treasure Island. Is it says Blind Frost here. Did he say that? Of blind frost. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, we will we go there someday? There's been a lot of locations name dropped in the game story that we eventually went to Ishgard. Went to Ishgard, Thavnir. They also mentioned Alamigo, which is interesting to say. They want to continue visiting <laughs> places they mention. Uh, in Elpis, the ancients. Oh, sorry. That that there's a new question after that. Um, so they yeah they they did say that they want to continue. They said I think they almost said they implied that we're gonna go to any any place that's been mentioned is an option. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, in Elpis, the ancients appear much larger than humans, but when summoned with Assem's magic, they appear smaller. They specifically talked about um, Meteon, right? Uh, for this question? Yes. Yeah, because Meteon appears, um, you know, she's the size you'd expect on Elpis because we've been she's, grown. Yeah. Um, she's but, appropriately she's the appropriate height in comparison to ancients yeah mm -hmm. uh, but then when we see her in Ultima Thule she is small like she's our size mm -hmm. yes this is the this is an this answer I don't understand but he says Ultima Thule reflect your internal emotions which is why they appear with that height as it matches your memories and internal conception of them I mean, I've thought about this a bit more. It does make sense, a, well, 
as much as you can make this make sense. Because Emmet, Selk, and Vanar are also our height as well when we summon them. That's Not true. Not Vanar, sorry. Um, height hit the dais. That's true, actually. Yeah, that's true. I can see that. Okay, whatever. I don't care. Um, where it's are th- a, it's yeah. a world of emotion. It yeah. makes no sense. Hmm. Where are the Thavnarian onions in Thavnir? <laughs> Big question. Yeah, because, I mean, I didn't f- fully understand the question when it was asked, but, of course, it's because the they are very expensive. They must be very th- th- sought after. The, Yoshida, he asked the Lord team, they are a unique cultivar, cultivar and are rare even in Thavnir. This is dictated by the non-combat designers. It's their fault. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. They're not that rare because almost everyone with a garden can grow them very easily. True. Yeah, but they take seven money. days to grow, Mela. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that'd be awful if we could get real life onions that only took seven. I mean, that's <laughs> mega fast. I mean, seven of <clears throat> our days, but remember that an in Eorzean day is one hour and ten minutes. So, how many actual days is that? That's a long time. That's true, actually, yeah. yeah. Um, are Sodiark and Hydaelyn gone for good, or are there parts of them elsewhere? Oh, Another yes. question that we have pondered yeah. on this podcast. Yoshida says he's, he's not going to talk his way out of this. He just said Hydaelyn was completely destroyed. That's all he says that, just straight up. Um, mm-hmm. Fan Daniel crushed Sodiark's heart and therefore Aww. completely <laughs> destroyed him. Aww. Aww. Poor Sodiark. Aww. Parts just of... wanted some loving. <laughs> <laughs> parts of Sodiark are in the reflections, but they fade with his main body. So that's good because that's that was a big mm-hmm. thing about what we were discussing. Yeah, yeah, is what happens to mm-hmm. the other bits. Well, it's gonna. I think that actually makes more sense when you consider the idea that, like, if this was two expansions, Zodiac would have been the final boss, mm-hmm. and the fact that parts of him fade would reflect in the same way that that happened with Anima. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, why didn't the Warrior of Light create an alternative timeline? Oh no, they talked about. Oh yeah, they talked about time travel. I forgot about it. Why didn't the Warrior of Light create an alternate timeline in Elpis? Yoshida says, "You can, you can come up with your own theories, but that the timelines would play out the same no matter what." So Yoshi P works. So from Yoshi P standpoint, the timelines are fixed. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it's preordained. Yes, it's preordained. I think that's what we, I think that's what we sort of agreed upon. Yes, when we discussed this a couple of weeks ago. Yes, um, Orvina worked hard to preserve preserve things to prevent changes so that the Warrior of Light could succeed. Meeting Argos was proof, in a way, that these timelines would converge in the way that Vena hoped. This think about this question when you replay the Endwalker main scenario in New Game Plus in six point one. So, there you go. So Your top, again, I guess. Yeah. He doesn't address the fact that the Garaha time travel is functionally different. But... Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Mm-hmm. Don't think about it. Um, so here's the question about the ages. The Warrior of Light ages, but will other main but will other main characters? Alphino, Alice? It's hard to say, uh, he says. As a director producer, it's fun to think about aging those two up. But he wonders about Common stating, I liked them better before. You can't undo that change. It's a hard it's choice. It's difficult. I wouldn't mind a time skip. Me no. neither. Because um, mm-hmm. I, I like Alpha and Alice, but I I feel they are hindered in yeah. a way by being so young. Yeah. It'd be nice mm-hmm. to see what they'd be able to accomplish as, you know, not just oh, those kids, those mm-hmm. meddling kids. Yeah. Um, if manga, uh, like One Piece, okay, this listing, uh, s- uh manga, um, will draw what, uh, what if scenarios with aged up characters. So maybe in that context, they can do something. And then chat was well, filled with do it. Yeah. Just do it. When instead of that, they just made an alternate universe where they're all school children. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That's true. So um, I guess they have the option. Yeah. Um, Okay, souls are also made of ether. Vena Heidelin used so much ether that her soul also dissipated. So Sodiark could also uh, use ether aside from their could souls. Could only. Sorry, could only use ether aside from their souls due to the different types due to the different types of summoning. In 5.2, Vena's group discussed this. 
The Na Heidelin expended her very soul to fight the Warrior of Light to pre prepare them for the final journey to the edge of the universe. So, so that's a... Yeah? She's been completely... No essence of her ether remains. She no, actually sad. cannot be reincarnated. No, that's all gone. So she... Yeah. I miss her. Yeah. Um... And then there was a question, a question sort of rela relating to that. What happens to the blessing of light? Um, <clears throat> so they uh, said that they don't think that it will disappear and they wouldn't want it to disappear. Um, so um, so perhaps Vena Heidelin re-granted it. And then they used this quote, my love will be with you forever, my dearest children. Now that's like her final gift before she died, mm -hmm. which was sad. Um so yeah, the uh, the blessing of light um, is still on us. Um, what exactly are the red seals that appear on the, over the ancient slash Asians' faces? This was interesting. This was an interesting mm -hmm. lore bit that we got. Um, according to Yoshi P, it's a limiter to constrain the grand magic the convocation uses. Each sigil defines uh, the seat of the convocation. It lies with the convocation's duty and obligation to their society in that role. So he, he mentioned, so also if you give up your seat like Vena did, you would lose the sigil. So it's sort of a way to keep, to, um, to identify you when you use like so magic, like passport. to keep you accountable. Yeah. So that you know, that, oh, that's Harry a... Potter as well. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. So an interesting thing that this brought up that was pointed out on the subreddit is that the Asians that are involved in the three starter quests in Limpsa, Ulda, and Gradania, mm -hmm. they use this. Ah, oh. yes. Mm. I don't know if they thought about that when they said gave this answer. Probably not. Probably not. Mm. Mm. Don't think about it. Uh, don't think about it. In fact, the next question might help you not think about it. <laughs> oh, what was hard to wrap up? <sighs> was a question like what kind of like story threads or whatever was hard to or what was hard to wrap up yoshida asked banrioda about this it's not unusual for things to change or disappear as they write the story not true of endwalker but things didn't retcon correctly from 1.0 like the path companion and he actually said that the path companion was in the early stages of a realm reborn like they had it Aww. in the game and they were like but this isn't going anywhere. We don't know how to do this. Like, who's this character? So they ignored it. So that that's harder to accept <laughs> than them going, ah, <laughs> oh, we just didn't bother at all. Because the fact that they were like, oh, no, we need to bring the Path Companion back in. So that's sad. That's sad. But at least it gives me closure now because they were like, this isn't going anywhere. <laughs> like, they were like, literally yeah. like, th what is the point of this? So... Imagine yeah. this, if they all appeared as, like, back back during, like, 2.0, mm -hmm. when you're first going to the Waking Sands, there are a bunch of, like, NPCs in the background that you can't even interact with. Imagine if all of the Path Companions were there, mm. and then you just see their corpses once Livia is done with them. <laughs> oh, God. That That's horrible. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think... I mean, I... Maybe it would be more satisfying because you could at least know what happened to them. <laughs> well, I think they're they're kind of. I think everyone has just accepted that the canon ending to the Path Companion is that they just died in the calamity. Yeah. Because there's so yeah. many other people that died. So. Or um, make your own up there, like they live at. Yeah, you can make it up actually. God yeah. Float. Because they're they're never going to reappear. You can just make up whatever with your Path Companion. Um. Mm -hmm. Okay. They have decided the names and true identities of every member of the Convocation of Fourteen. Whether they reveal them depends on where the plot takes them in the future. So they have that. All the names oh. of the Convocation, they're set. And their mm -hmm. true identities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was Vena su uh, Sundering the Star truly the only way to save it? Uh, Yoshida consulted with Ishikawa and said that Yoshola theorized that the ancients were so dense in ether that they could not control Dynamis. Uh, other ancients concluded that Zodiac was, was the solution to Meteon's Song of Oblivion, but Vena concluded that they could not change as a people and would be their own undoing. Uh, in the Dead Ends, the Rala boss, the the Rala boss, may have been a similar fate. Huh? Might have, 
been a similar fate awaiting the ancients in a different future. For that reason, she chose to sunder the star and dilute ether so that mankind could control Dynamis and silence the Song of Oblivion. Vena herself concluded that this is not a moral or just decision and deeply agonizes over it. People have a lot of feelings about this. Um, it was that decision to sunder humanity so that they could control Dynamis and kill the end singer that said that Vena is really an ancient, huh? A parallel to Emmet's decision and judgment of humanity at the end of Shadowbringers. Um, Hermes erases his own memory to, on his terms, judge humanity's worth. That's what ties Vena, Emmet, Selk, and Hermes together. Um, mm. Yeah, okay. Um, Emmet Selk is popular, but Yoshida agrees with Alfino telling him, what right does he have uh, Does he have to do that? If you have to go back and look at these parallels, you might find them interesting. Mm. Yeah, it's an idea that ancients are very open to making very world-altering decisions on behalf of their entire race. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> This next question. Why did you say this, UGP? <laughs> Why? Oh, was the theories the only planetary body that was sundered is the question. And Yoshida says, apparently the reflection... Well, he says that apparently the reflections uh, moons have their own significance. And then he refuses to elaborate. <laughs> sundered moons would have contained pieces of Zodiac as well. And apparently we'll get more about this in the story. At some point. Well, apparently they don't contain pieces of Zodiac anymore. Yeah, that's no. right. So know that. Yeah. He's already told They've us that they dissipate. Now, so yeah. Okay. Well, my here's my crackpot theory based on very little theorizing. The moon is how people will be able to move between shards. Mm. Well, yeah. I, I, yeah, that makes sense. That's going to be like the... the like teleport stations. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Is there a watcher on every moon? Mm, we don't know who the watcher is still. No, no. Uh, what parts of Endwalker were you perfectionist about? Yoshida is most particular about the direction characters were looking in cutscenes, the time between dialogue and the motions between lines. I remember A Realm Reborn having a lot of issues with especially timing. Because that, that yeah. is some... Uh, yeah. It's hard to go back to a Realm Reborn cutscenes after Endwalker. Um, mm -hmm. Yoshida was... I mean, I've been, yeah. I've been watching the spoken cutscenes, at least, mm -hmm. for a Realm Reborn as I go through my Materia character. <laughs> uh, it's very rough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Yoshida was particular about things not being misunderstood, but there were some interpretations that interpretations that they did not want to convey. Ishikawa was very busy writing the script until the last minute and couldn't do all the checks, so Yoshida had to stand in. Mm. Yeah, okay. Um, this expansion was the game's first finale, and he is a big fan of Yoshitaka Ama uh, Amano, so it was important for him to make sure that Amano's designs were properly depicted within the game. When he asked Amano to draw the end singer, he asked him to draw despair. Mm. Yoshida and Amano have uh, a back and forth about despair and what comes to mind. The bird imagery was important. After 15 minutes, Amano said, I got it. He really wants to show us the original end, sing end singer design Amano created. He did. did. He did. Yeah, yeah, he didn't, but I hope he does one day. Yoshida mm -hmm. was also particular about the story instance battles and the subquest timing. With the final days going on, they had to be careful with some of the more uh, chore like quests and having you map having your map explode in quest marks. Yes. It did explode in quest marks. Well, they only way. did so progressively. So you, well, you, could, you could do mm. them while you were there, which I liked. Yeah. Um, in order to create... Quest... Yeah, go on. The side quests in um, Palika's Stand, none of them actually appear until you can almost completely finish the storyline mm -hmm. in That's Fabian. true. Yeah. In order to create a good experience, Yoshida played through these quests himself. Uh, pruning anything he felt was excessive. He was particular about the Heidelin encounter and the trust dialogue, writing some of it himself. Are there pla are there plans to make healers more viable? That was that was the last <clears throat> law question. 
And that was the lore. Yeah, that was the last lore question. Are there any plans to make healers more viable? A warrior solo cleared Pandemonium's first <laughs> circle normal. Yoshida says the first raid's tier uh, tier holds back on the damage output to allow for more people to clear. You're probably comparing the raid to 5.4, but they want to give people time to clear this tier before increasing the difficulty in the next two tiers. If you want more challenge, try the ultimate and suffer. <laughs> wow. So, there you go. Um, that was uh, not answering the question. Um, no, so. he didn't viable though, and who cares if a warrior is solo cleared? It doesn't have hardly any auto attacks. Mm. It's like I'm a little. Why well, do people get so? Well, he, he does. Some guy spent like almost an entire hour to clear a fight. It's mm -hmm. not like, I mean, yeah. it's cool, That's a, but it's a waste it's of a very, time. Well, yeah, it's a very exaggerated way of making the point that like. Healing is very. You don't need to heal that much as a healer. No. And when that is the case, your other options are not that exciting. Yeah, because it's it's no. so it's uh, such a. Yeah, it's 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 so they absurd. Have, no, they have taken away a lot of because they've the DPS yeah dummy. they've taken our DPS away. Yet they've made it less. The healers are less important now. Like everyone can heal themselves. So why take that other. You know, it's weird. Yeah, maybe just adding in more things for healers to do is better, but viable, yeah. It's yeah. Not, it's Viable's a weird way of phrasing it. Yeah. And it's, an, it's a very unique example as well. And yes. it was the normal mode. It's not, do the savage and then you'll be able to heal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, okay, so a Dark Knight's Living Dead slash Blood Weapon are more difficult to use than other tank uh, mechanics. A whole bunch of jobs, in addition to Dark Knight, will be adjusted in patch 6.1. They are monitoring feedback and aiming to fulfill many of your requests in 6.1. Um, they will definitely be adjusting Living Dead. They've also seen the feedback on White Mage and Machinists struggling, struggling and ask those players to hang on. Dragoons are concern concerned the jump animations are too long and will be adjusted. So... Oh. Yeah, th there's something I, I need to mention, because we, we always talk about how Benediction has a one-second delay. Like, there's an animation, and oh, then it yeah. hits, right? But we have a skill... Living, uh, Hallowed Ground 2. Hallowed Ground 2, oh, yeah. yes. We have a skill now that came with this expansion that is so instant, it, it's frightening. And that's the bells. I can... Uh, as an attack is happening... I can have I can activate the bell and place it and like literally the the second I hear the click as it places and the the attack hits us it activates the heal it detects that I've been hit and heals immediately it is the most instant action I have ever seen as a white mage why is that not the case for benediction it's like what Georgi said when um, pet actions or whatever changed and they're super instant. There's oh, something yeah. that they've coded that works really well mm -hmm. and some things just don't still. Mm -hmm. So my argument for why Benediction and also Hallowed Ground still have that delay is that it's to make up for the fact that they are the most overpowered versions of those types of skills. <sighs> mm. That is my theory, but there's just no... Just align them then. <clears throat> yeah. Make it a roll action. Who mm -hmm. cares? Yeah. Make it a roll action. Why do you want to take more things away from White Mage? Shut up. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, um, well, it would work for that, but like for the Hallowed Ground, I was mostly focusing on. Mm -hmm. All tanks have an a safety button. Yeah. Why should mine mean need me to be safe? like a whole second earlier than I want to be safe to not just insta-die even after it casts. Hey, all the others are pretty risky. <laughs> yeah. Like, we also have Tetra. Tetra has the same problem. Tetra is also just as slow as Benediction, by the way. I don't think Tetra... Te Tetra and the the other uh, that... one. I think so. I don't I don't think I've... I don't think it has... I feel like Tetra has... At least has a... It might... It may have a delay, but I'm certain it has a less of a delay than... Oh, no, no, Benediction, Benediction is definitely the king of delays, of sure, mm -hmm. for sure. Because Benediction, yeah, Benediction plays like an animation before, like, the, the heal actually hits. Yeah. Um, okay, 
Anyways, uh, moving on. Um, with Sage, this, uh, with Sage and Reaper added, uh, will you uh, will we get more glamour plates? There's various issues they want to address, but they have to do them slowly and systematically. In 6.1, the number of plates will increase. Number of plates isn't final, but should be sufficient for the time being. More storage for the glamour dresser are on deck for the 6.x series. So that there you go. So more plates. plates before. S I thought we were getting glamour dresser storage before more plates, well, but it sounds like. From this, it sounds like the reverse. Well, it makes sense because last time they updated the glamour dresser, that they gave us more storage. So now mm -hmm. it's time for the plates. How um, many plates do you think we're getting? How much do you think is sufficient? Five. How much do you think they think is we're sufficient? We're getting at five or something, yeah, like three, five, or some like Just weird hammer number, on like six. More parts to the Frankenstein system rather than addressing it. <laughs> Plenty just yeah. seems so. Not enough. Yeah, I know. I don't know. Yeah, but the UI is going to look stupid if you have like fifty. Oh, you know, Mela, I, I, I bet you they're going to change it to like a drop-down list or something instead. Ugh. They have it's to. So they can't just keep adding tiny buttons. Well, no. Mm -hmm. oh, if they could do it like the uh, mountain minion menu where you have those right and left arrows. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> God. Horrible just system. It. Horrible. Make it better. Yeah. Um, will there be glamour for Imperial soldiers or Charlian forum members? Um, after the Garlemald chapter in Endwalker, it's possible we could see Garlian themed gear implemented. No word on the Charlian this... part, I think. So that part, I think they actually confirmed that we're getting Garlian themed gear, but I could be misremembering exactly what was said during the live. At better. this point, my mind was starting to flatline, so I don't remember if he said that. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds good. It makes sense. Yeah. I mean, we already we already do have. Guardian themed gear, but mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but like the common people, the common the like idea. what they were wearing. Oh right, like yeah. just okay. Yeah. Um. Well, in six point zero, sorry, six point one, then we will get the orchestr orchestron roll with the theme you hear on the radio in Garlemald, and that will be the distorted version. Soken, they had the the clean version and the distorted version, but Soken wanted the players to get that like the feeling that they heard they got when they heard. The first time in game, so they, they first play. heard it, yeah. yeah. But that was they did, they did suggest that they might, well, they will in all likelihood include the non-distorted version at some point as well. Yes. What about Charlie and housing? And he just that uh, he was done when this question was he asked. collapsed at this. We haven't even he... opened like the Ishgard housing yet. Please try living in Ishgard first, is what he Please said. Please try living in Ishgard first. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's essentially a don't. That's way ahead. If, Leave if, him alone. Yeah. <laughs> Let it just wait for the Ishgard housing. You guys can't be satisfied. <laughs> <laughs> Will there be Emmet, Sel, Hades, and Sinos minions? Yoshida decides who they put on, uh, put out as minions. They hold back on characters who, whose role in the story has ended. But yes, they may consider those characters. He specifically said, could we add a Sinos minion? Another lamp he's starts back. to flash. He's, he's so coy about Xenos. Yeah. But the weird thing about Xenos is that like, he's one of the characters that has had multiple outfits. So I don't understand why we haven't gotten any minions mm. of Xenos to this point, to be honest. Point, yeah, Plus, that's true. Um, we do get a lot of wind up Scion yeah. minions. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. He can For just be added outfits. to that when he joins. Yeah. We're now third <clears throat> Ishtola. Mm. Yeah. God. Um, okay. What's the update on female Hrothgar? The art theme drew a variety of styles and they've picked two of them. Art team. Sorry, art team. Drew a variety of styles and they've picked two of them. It's going to be some time before they can implement them as a race, but they are making progress. Two of them. I saw. Yeah. I saw someone on the subreddit say that they picked one that's like the big bulky one that like people are the, like that makes them look more like Rogan and um yeah. or male Rogan I should say in terms of body shape at least. Oh uh, or they're gonna go with the, the sexy felt Vieira shaped ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is so true though. Yeah, yeah. Uh Yoshida I says they go for like kind of well close close to just what a Rothgar looks like now, a male one. Kind mm. of in that same vein right mm -hmm. a little bit thinner but like yeah essentially the same degree another... of musculature yeah no. we don't need more of this no mm -hmm. 
Uh, Yoshida says, it's not like everyone needs to use all races equally. People will decide what characters to use for whatever reason. That gives the world flavor and variety. They're not focused on it, uh, on if it will be used equally, but as long as people have a good time. Yoshida asks you, asks you to remember when they de debuted Viera and Rothgar, and he said, this is the last time we add a new race. It's fair. Yeah. Do mm -hmm. not forget that. There are no more races after this. Um, no more playable ones, at least. No. So there you go. That's um, that is the ten years. The live letter. That's the live letter. What a good live letter. Um, yeah, it's all right. It was perhaps the most all right. Uh, it, it was, was pretty damn good. It was the no, most eventful good. live letter we've had in a long time. I don't think there was really any like downtime during the whole live letter really like there's not there wasn't really like other than the fact that the kill was dying because he was tired like there wasn't it wasn't the kind of thing where we were like we can barely focus because they're just right. repeating themselves right. and saying things we already know mm -hmm. there was some good hype yeah it was cool and uh the fact that we're getting a graphical update is crazy even though it is like two years away but still mm -hmm. it's exciting the Q&A is one of the best they've ever done. Yes. Normally they fill it up with questions that like they want to answer that aren't really that satisfying for us to hear. Right. But this was a bunch of questions that, as we said, questions we've asked on this podcast. Yeah, they were really good. I was very satisfied with that. Uh, even though Yoshi P doesn't always give the best answers, at least they were asked. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. hey. Um, yeah. So there you go. That was Live Letter 68. Next time we'll be covering Live Letter 69. Next time we're covering a Live Letter, that is. Two weeks away. Yes. So uh, one week of nothing and then... A w a no, no not nothing. We've got quite a lot to <laughs> I mean, actually I, already talking, cover next week. I'm talking about of nothing, like, for, like you know what I mean. I'm not talking about the show. I'm no talking events. About, yeah, no events in 14. Uh, and then there's a Live Letter. Um, all right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. That is the end of this episode. We'll be back next week, same time, same place. Make sure to catch uh, Sunday Fun Day tomorrow. Um, be nice, and we'll see. Oh, follow on Twitter at speakers of Twitch.tv. I remembered it now. Twitch.tv slash speakers of Heidelin. YouTube.com. YouTube.com slash SpeakersXLV exclamation Discord in chat if you want to join our Discord server. If you're watching on demand, link is in the description. Remember to send us mog mail. You can actually send us mog mail for next week. Uh, maybe, you know, with questions about the live letter or your views on the live letter mm -hmm. or anything. Anything. SpeakersXLV.com slash mog mail. We'll see you later. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.